absolutely love the thought of being able to play on Thanksgiving in the afternoon against such a high quality opponent at Falcon Stadium. Thanksgiving is usually like one of the times you spend with your family and you know it's kind of like you still get spent with your family but it's your extended family. It's going to be nice being able to um, spend the time and the whole day with your family, guys you, you work day in and day out with. But when you're growing up and you watch football, uh, you never dream that you'll be playing on Thanksgiving. You'll be that game that people are watching. Just play a rivalry game on that day is going to be amazing. Playing for the Ram Falcon Trophy. And I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Hmm. That looks throw out the records. Throw out the stats. It's a rivalry <laughs> game. Guys, let's preview Colorado State and Air Force coming up in moments. Who are you picking? Rams or Falcons? Coach Stardust. Well, off. you know how sick uh, Colorado State was last week because they thought they had the game won. Preston Williams, big time receiver. Yeah. Air Force has lost five games on the road, but guess what, BJ? They're at home today. Right. I'm saying Air Force, Donald Hammonds, the run game, Rensburg and the guys, I say they get it, it done. It was a heartbreaking loss for Air Force last week uh, yes. versus Wyoming Wyoming. as well. You mentioned the turnovers late in that ball game, 0 for 3 on third downs in the in the fourth quarter. I'm going to go with the Rams. I, I, I think, as you just stated, they're sitting there really hurting after losing in the manner in which they did. This Preston Williams kid is yeah. unbelievable. Mm. And if their defense can muster up any type of D versus that Air Force option, I think they win. Was that Falcon? Oh, he's, that Falcon? He, he's late to come out. He's been banged up, oh, but oh. Aurora returns. Enjoy the game. We'll see you back Where's here. That after. Turkey? Yeah, yeah. That turkey? Let's get turkey? it. On this Thanksgiving, the electric Preston Williams in Colorado State come on down south to face a rival. An emotional senior day here at the Academy. The Air Force Falcons and Colorado State Rams. We are in beautiful Colorado Springs on this Thanksgiving for Mountain West football. Rams and Falcons. Yes, this is a holiday rivalry. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray. Amanda Balionis will join us shortly from our football family here at CBS Sports. Happy Thanksgiving to you and to you, partner. Happy Thanksgiving to you. It's a beautiful day. Kind of makes me wish I could go suit up and play a little football, Rich. Well, these two teams played football this weekend, and both teams had games won and then lost them. So maybe it's a short week for a good reason for these teams. Yeah, and it was funny. I was talking with Coach Bobo yesterday on our call, and we were talking about it, just the close losses he had at Georgia, the game against Alabama, the game against Auburn. You look last week in the Wyoming game, a tough, tough loss. The last four minutes of that game, it, it was it was a, a rough one for Air Force. Yeah, no, so if you're Air Force and Troy Calhoun, you got to bounce back. you got to bounce back, but the thing is it's a short week, which is awesome for this program. You get to push it behind you that last game focus on what matters most that next snap that next game I think he has his guys ready to go all right if you thought that loss was painful for Air Force Colorado State was in a great game and a great opportunity for Mike Bobo this was a chance to beat the number 23 team in the country Hail Mary full of grace oh yes Preston Williams with a catch the win for the Rams what a comeback win what a mo oh no he stepped out of bounds, penalty flags. They wiped out the touchdown, and that wiped out the win. Hey, it's been a tough season for Carlos. It goes back to the spring. They lose their starting quarterback, Colin Hill, to an ACL injury. He came back midway through, and then obviously you see Coach Bobo, his health issues that he went through this summer. It's just been, just been up and down. They just have not played a complete football game, both offensively and defensively, and then throw special teams in there as well. So they're hoping to finish the season off strong. They're going to have an opportunity this afternoon. All right, if these two teams are going to win the game, Colorado State's going to have to throw it, and Air Force is going to run it. Yeah, Preston Williams, I mean, he is he's a stud, Rich. He's going to be playing outside. I want to see him get matched up in the slot, though, against the linebackers, against the safeties. He's a big, tall, physical receiver, can make all the catches you want. And then Cole Fagan, talented, talented, talented. Can he get to five to six yards per carry? That's going to be the key right now. Tremendous job this entire season. You see the stats, over 700 yards, six touchdowns. He is the workhorse for that offense. All right, to get a deeper dive into this rivalry, let's say happy Thanksgiving to our Amanda Balionis. Hi, Amanda. Hi, happy Thanksgiving, you guys. And like you said, it is rivalry week. It's the first time Air Force has hosted a Thanksgiving game. And of course, it's also senior day. So there's plenty of motivation to go around here at Air Force. And when I 
I spoke to Coach Calhoun about what this means for this team. He said it would obviously mean a lot for these seniors to go out on top, also for their friends and family that are here today. He said, but it would really mean a lot for these underclassmen as well. They've been their mentors for the last few years. Oh, good timing, Amanda. Can't come to the Air Force Academy and play football without a flyover. F-16s from Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The weather, man, did we luck out. I mean, look, it's Thanksgiving, it's Colorado. This could have been snow and sleet and ice, 57 degrees and a slight breeze. Oh, it's, it's actually gorgeous. It going on the field pregame, seeing the quarterbacks throw, the receivers run around. Everyone feels good. Beautiful day to play some football, Rich. They do play for a trophy, the Ram Falcon Trophy. Air Force leads this series. The last Colorado State win on this field was 2002. That was a Bradley Van Pelt-led Colorado State team. That's how long it's been since the Rams have come south and won here. Preston Williams, excuse me, Anthony Hawkins, I believe, is deep. And to the 20 and out to the 23-yard line. Hawkins with the return. Even on Thanksgiving, we say hello to the cow, and we say hello to Colin Hill, who gets the start at quarterback. Can he feel more comfortable in the pocket today? He needs to step into his throws. Watching the film last week for Utah State, very hesitant at times, especially throwing the ball vertically down the field deep. And then he saw the couple pick sixes, so just needs to take care of it and then trust his receivers and their speed. Colorado State was great on offense, great on defense. Quick throw to Preston Williams. There's a catch. And he's going to get just a couple of yards for Kyle Johnson. Last week, 506 yards offense for Colorado State. Olabisi Johnson, another weapon besides Williams. Yeah, a lot of attention is going to be put on Preston Williams, and he deserves that. I mean, he's, he can do everything. He's going to be matched up against the safety, against the linebackers. But Olabisi Johnson gives them another outlet on the outside. If all the attention is going to be on Preston Williams, look for him to have a big day one-on-one. -on -one. Second down, nine. Hill again, it's deflected and incomplete. Air Force getting a hand on that. This is an Air Force defense that is going to come after them, and here's a good example of it. Yeah, it's a great job getting up there, tipping the pass. It's a quick speed out on the outside. As an offensive lineman, what you need to do on these quicker hitting plays, cut your defensive end. That way you can't get up and tip the football. Not the quarterback's fault, not the receiver's fault. Offensive line needs to chop them down so that doesn't happen. So an early third down and 10. Air Force will blitz a lot and in a variety of ways. They will come after Hill. And here they come. Has time, fires. Man open and a catch at the 42. Warren Jackson, a jumping catch for the sophomore. That's a 20-yard pickup. Yeah, it's a great job by the offensive line. I want to see the pickup right there, even by Izzy Matthews, number 24, the running back. And he, we talked about it, Rich. Rich Air Force is going to bring pressure, which creates one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Inside leverage by the nickel. Warren Jackson does a great job on the corner route, beating his guy. And it's a beautiful delivery by Colin Hill. Colorado State has explosive speed on the outside. First touch for Izzy Matthews, and a flag is down right at the line of scrimmage. Matthews with a seven-yard carry. Matthews went for 103 yards last week. Devontae. Illegal formation. Offense. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Mike Bobo looking at the plays. He is the offensive coordinator right now calling the plays as he did at the University of Georgia. Yeah, he feels comfortable calling the plays. Obviously, the health issue comes first, and, and we heard about that news in the summertime, but once he felt a little bit better and can move around a little bit more, get back into di diving into the game plan, I thought he's done a tremendous job, even with all the issues we've seen at the quarterback position throughout this year, going back and forth between Colin Hill and K.J. Carter-Samuels. First down at 15. Hill has a quick release, hits his man, that's Williams, makes a nice cut, scampers out of bounds, into Air Force territory, 17 yards, and a first down. This defense likes pressure, and it's great to see Garrett Capilla yep. back in the mix. They're going to need all the help they can get with this secondary. We talk about the talent on Colorado State, the receivers, the tight ends. These guys in the back end are going to have to play big, because we've already seen it. a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. 
They're going to have to set their game up big time this afternoon. Already Colin Hill is three for four on this drive. Matthews, a little misdirection, and he gets to the 43-yard line. It's hard to know what to make of Colorado State after last week. Utah State's really good. They're number 23 in the country. And Colorado State moved the ball 506 yards, and they stoned that Utah State offense. It, it's tough to win when you throw two pick sixes. And, and the, the, these weren't deep balls. These were quick outs, a speed out by the slot, and then a slant later on in the game. That's what happens when a center jumps offside. A little quick snap. It's not a penalty because obviously once the ball is snapped, the play starts. But Colby Meeks delivered it a lot sooner than Colin Hill thought. Yeah, just a little bit of mis miscommunication right there. I think Colin Hill just fumbled the snap, was not expecting it. But that's sometimes the issues you f find out, you see when you're mixing quarterbacks. Everyone has a different rhythm when it comes to your cadence, the rhythm, the way you say it. A little miscommunication on that last play. Third down 11, Hill's throw is over the head of Williams. Zane Lewis on the coverage for Air Force. And Colorado State's drive stalls right at midfield. That's a great job by Air Force. Matching up on the outside, once again, one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's going to be the key all night or all afternoon, Rich, is can they win these one-on-one -on -one matchups because they're not as physical, they're not as tall, they're not as fast. The key then is going to be can you create pressure on Colin Hill, force him to get the ball out of his hands fast. Andrew Smith is deep at the 10 for Air Force. Ryan Stonehouse, good kick. And it's caught but not held and into the end zone. Touchback. Air Force gets their first touch on this Thanksgiving. Next. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. By Golden Corral. Your choice rules. And by Google. A proud supporter of veterans, military service members, and their families. Great shot in there of two legendary coaches, Sonny Lubick of Colorado State, Fisher DeBerry of Air Force. In this rivalry here on Thanksgiving, we present a cow in a helmet in our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. DJ Hammond is a dynamic quarterback. Uh, he is, and he brings a different feel to this offense. We think Air Force, triple option, run, run, run. Not so fast, not with this quarterback. He can push the ball vertically down the field. Little triple option look there, and the pitch to Caden Remsburg, and Colorado State is all over it. Wow, Rashad Ajayi made the first hit. Quinn Brennan finished him off. And this is how you want a, to start off a drive if you're Colorado State in the defense. Push Air, so Air Force back offensively. Negative plays. You get Air Force in second and long. You get him in third and long. Force them to throw the ball 10-plus yards down the field. You're setting yourself up for success all afternoon. The Air Force ran for 368 yards last week. Hammond to the air, sidearm slings it out there. Andrew Smith to catch, and he picks his way out of bounds. Short of the first down at the 25-yard line, gain of 12. Air Force offensively, Remsburg's a feature back. Yeah, and he had a tremendous day last week versus Wyoming. Career high, 128 yards. It's going to be a nice mixture. We talked about Cole Fagan to start the show off, how dynamic he is as a fullback. Then you're going to see Donald Hammond. He's going to pull it if he doesn't like it, and then pitch out to Remsburg on the outside. So third down and five. We must get first downs. That's what Troy Calhoun told us yesterday. And it's a third and five on the first possession for Air Force. The pitch by Hammond. Remsburg got a downhill tilt to the bat, and he's across the 35 to the 37. Jamal Hicks made the stop. 12-yard gain. I just want you to see great read by Donald Ham right here. Defensive end crashes. I'm going to pull it, but watch the blocking on the outside. The receivers on the outside blocking, locking up right here on the outside. That's a tremendous job. And that's when you get those big runs down the field. 
Now to the 37. With some breathing room here. Straight ahead, Fagan's first carry. Defense played much better last week. They gave up just one touchdown against Utah State. And that's a very talented Utah State. You turn on the film of Utah State every week offensively, they're scoring 40, 50 points, but it starts with Josh Watson. Tremendous day last week. He's been tremendous this entire season, leading the team in tackles right now. They're going to need that type of performance once again if they want to get a win. The defense certainly has had its challenges this year. Hammond will keep, and Colorado State is all over that. So it's going to bring up third down and long. Now, Jeff Jancic is the defensive coordinator for Colorado State. They've changed their scheme just for this game. Well, you, you look at Colorado State last season, they were 3-4 defense. Jancic comes in, mixes it up. They were a 4-3 defense for this entire season. And then now they're going to go back to the 3-4. He thinks it's more balanced. He can get those edge rushers, those outside linebackers, upfield a little bit easier. This is the difficulty when you play a triple option team. You gotta pretty much change your whole scheme in order to stop them. Now the third down and five, this for the 42. Hammond another pitch. Remsburg is caught right at the sticks. Jamal Hicks makes the tackle and that's gonna be short of the first down. What a play. Tremendous job by Jamal Hicks right there. One on one, he understands where the boundary is, where the first down marker is. But this is Air Force offense, and any time they get into this fourth and short situation, you got to be ready for the fullback dive, especially the way Cole Fagan's been playing lately. 23 of 38, the most attempts on fourth down in FBS. Fourth and one here. Fagan, hard to stop that man when he gets a little bit of daylight. This is the issue. If you want to overload one side against this offense, they're going to check it. You saw them check it, and then they're just going to run the opposite direction. That's why as a defense, you have to stay pretty basic. You have to stay base, because if you move everyone to one side, we just saw that play, they're going to check it and run the other direction. And this is exactly what Air Force wants. Long drives, eat up clock. Hammond, little flip pass there. It's Taven Bordeaux, and he's got a nine-yard pickup. Aaron Murray, what are the keys to this game? Wait, going back to Colorado State's offense, you talk about time of possession. Right now, Colorado State needs to make sure they stay in the field because Air Force is going to have these type of drives. And then for Air Force, prevent the explosive plays on defense. We talked about the big receivers that Colorado State has. Big, lanky, can stretch the field vertically. Stop the big play from happening. Last year, Air Force ran for 423 yards against Colorado State's Bordeaux busts through again to the 25-yard line. Dejon Owens made the stop. That's a 12-yard gain. Great job by the offensive line. And you talk about the amount of rushing yards that occurred in last year's game, Rich, and it's also 41 minutes of time and possession for Air Force. They dominated that game. They dominated the line of scrimmage. They kept Colorado State's offense off the field. And that's an issue for the defense. If you're on the field for 35 to 40 minutes, you're going to wear out, especially against a team that runs the ball this much. First and 10 for the 25. Hammond has time to the end zone, and it's caught, but out of bounds. Just past the stripe, Gerard Sanders with Quinn Brennan on the coverage. Tell you what, I'm, it's close. Catch. Yeah, oh. He may have it, Rich. He may. I think they're going to take a look at that. That left foot was down. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. I see right there, that though. The ruling is under further review. A little wobble there at the end once he had to catch it and complete the catch through the ground. But right there, the left foot is down. Looks to have control of the football. Now, the issues right there is that the ball hits the ground. That's a great look. Right there, the ball moves there at the end. I think this is going to be, you have to complete the catch. We see it all the time in the NFL. We've seen it in college football. It's complete it through. Now look at the official. See how late the incompletion came? I think his call of incomplete was because of the bobble, not because of the foot. 
If you watch the signal from the official on that overhead view. Look at him. Yet, yep, he yet is, to say anything. And he's, he's still looking. And he, from that view, he definitely can see underneath the receiver and see the ball move just a little bit under Sanders. But great effort, though. I tell you what, they even get one foot down in the back of the end zone like that. But this is the Air Force offense that we talked about at the beginning, Rich. They're going to they're gonna open it up. This isn't going to be run the ball 50, 60 times. We're going to see 10 to maybe 15 passes throughout this game in order to keep the defense honest. All right, so I, I think right there is good. As of right now, it's good. Seems to have control of the football. It's when he goes down now. That ball moves right there, hits the ground. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Yes. And that's, I mean, look, when we saw the official wait and not give the incompletion until he hit the ground and rolled over, that was an indication that it wasn't about a foot, it was about the bobble. But great effort, though. Great, great effort on the outside. But this just make, it makes it fun to watch Air Force even more now because you're going to get those type of plays because the defense, the safety is going to sell out against the run. And now all of a sudden you get two quarterbacks, Hammond and Sanders. Whatever one's in there can throw the ball down the field. And remember, Hammond is just a sophomore. Sanders is a junior on a pitch there. Remsburg outside gets away from Hicks, cuts inside the 15, and is blasted at the 13. That's another first down. They mark it at the 12. And these are the plays that Jamal Hicks and these safeties are going to have to make. You're going to get one-on-one -on -one opportunities this entire football game based on this offense and based on the read of the quarterback. Open field tackles is going to be a major key for the defensive backs. Fagan pulls his way down to the three-yard line. Cool. Fagan, the ball carrier. This is a 12-play, almost 70-yard drive, and six minutes of clock have been chewed up. And they had a fourth down conversion, a long third down conversion. This is not the start you want. Carlos said, go back to the first play of this drive. They did a tremendous job getting him in second and 15. Fagan into the end zone. An impressive opening drive from Air Force. An impressive job by the offensive line. Check out the right side. Blowing up the defensive line, pushing them into the end zone. And that's an easy job for Cole Fagan. Doesn't even have to knock anyone over. He loves contact, but right there, he could pretty much just walk in there for six points. You know how some coaches will script the first drive? Flag is down. I don't know that Troy Calhoun and his offensive coordinator, Mike Thiessen, could have scripted that any better. From number of plays to time off the clock. Eddie Shelton, our referee, making sure that. Prior to the snap, offside, defense, number 42, making contact. Half the distance to the goal, replay the try. Well, Mike Bobo with a sweatshirt this week. Remember last week in the uh, cold, he had just a uh, t shirt going. First touch for Air Force. They go 80 yards. And that's a fun drive for Air Force. Like you said, Rich, everything you want. Throwing the ball, and then Cole Fagan finishing off with a touchdown. It's a great way to start this afternoon off. Thanksgiving underway here in Colorado Springs. So is this game. Air Force a 7 0 lead over Colorado State. Turn back the clock to 2012. Connor Dietz, a terrific quarterback, and a long line of great quarterbacks here at Air Force. Two touchdowns in this win against Colorado State. He had a terrific four year career. And he is our Where Are They Now? brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. 
currently the director of sales strategy for Tough Athletics in Tampa. Tough is a company that helps teach student athletes life skills both on and off the fields. Boy, I mean, just go look back at some of these Air Force quarterbacks. Dee Dallas, the Morgans, Cale Pearson. Anthony Hawkins for Colorado State. And Hawkins is to the 29-yard line. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern, join us for a behind-the-scenes look at the Veterans Classic, which is hosted by the Navy Midshipmen. Give you an exclusive 48-hour look into one of the most unique traditions in college basketball. It's right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Right now, big drive for Colorado State. Air Force, long, tough drive offensively. You gotta keep, if you're Colorado State, keep your defense on the, on the bench for a little bit, give them a breather. Colin Hill hands it off, Adam Prentice. And that's an eight yard carry. And a lot of guys on that bench are rooting for Prentice, a fullback that never saw the ball. Well, Coach they didn't Bo throw it to him, they didn't hand it to him, and now all of a sudden he's in there. And you don't see a lot of fullbacks nowadays, but he's a great runner. Coach Bobo, you saw a little bit last week, the first time they experimented a little bit with Adam Prentice as the tailback. Coach Bobo said he's the type of guy that's going to always get you three to four yards, keep the chains moving. Why not? Prentice again, he needed two for the first down. And it looks like he's just short of the stick. It'll be third down and less than a yard. So he gives Colorado State what Air Force has in Cole Fagan, which is a big body who can move people. He's six foot, 230 pounds. And keep the clock running. Keep Try to get the time possession back on your side somehow and then get first downs. You talk about Air Force, always want to get to third and short, fourth and short, get those first downs. It's the same thing now when you put Adam Prentice back there at running back. Straight ahead, this is Izzy Matthews, and he's got the first down all the way out to midfield. So some positive yardage on the ground, something the Rams did not have in their first drive. Well, they're putting fullbacks at running back, and now they're putting their running back at fullback. Izzy Matthews, the starting running back for Colorado State. Just a simple belly dive. All it is is 34 belly right there. You put your most talented running back, move him to fullback, say, hey, go get me a first down. Let's keep that chain moving. Prentice is back in there. Play action Hill. Gonna go deep, got a man. That's Ola B.C. Johnson, who laid out and just couldn't grab it. Just a bit overthrown. Oh, what a tremendous job by Ola B.C. on the outside, just too far. And looking back to last week with Colin Hill, the one thing he didn't do, he was underthrowing everything. Go balls, post balls. The, run, the receivers are having to come back to make the catches. And Coach Bobo told him this, this week in practice, just let it go. Let it go. Our guys have the speed to go get it. He threw it just a little bit too far in that one, though. Second down, 10. Matthews. Jordan Jackson makes the hit. It's a gain of three. Third down and seven. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. These are going to be interesting downs right there. Third and medium, five to seven. I want to see, we talked about this Preston Williams get moved around a little bit, see if he can create some matchups. Or even Warren Jackson in the slot. I like Warren Jackson one-on-one -on -one as well against linebackers and safeties. Air Force brings a blitz. Hill is flushed. And he's hammered out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Garrett Capola coming up from his safety spot. I think he had to punt this ball here. I just don't think you, you, the way your defense played that first possession, you give Air Force a short field, about 50, 55 yards to go there and score again. See if your punter can try to pin him inside the 10. So signs of life from Colorado State's offense, but they've stalled both times they've hit midfield. End over end kick, good special teams work, and it's down at the nine yard line. On this Thanksgiving day, we have some sad news. Paul Carrick, father of our coordinating producer Todd, passed away last night. And we send our thoughts to Todd, 
to Julie and the rest of the Carrick family. Happy Thanksgiving from the officiating crew, from our family to yours. I like it. 7 0 Air Force on top of Colorado State. Tomorrow noon Eastern, CBS Sports Network back on the gridiron in the MAC, Akron, and Ohio. Followed by a matchup in the American ECU and a really good Cincinnati team. That's tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. We are here on a Thanksgiving. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray, Amanda Balionis, Air Force, Colorado State. Air Force second possession, first one was 80 yards on 13 plays. And it chewed up almost six minutes of clock. Yeah, it was a beautiful job. Colorado State has to figure out a way to get three and outs at some point this afternoon. The big area I'm going to look at right now, we talked about them changing over to that 3-4 defense. The nose tackle versus center. Can Damian Dickens get any kind of pressure and knock the fullback in the backfield? Quick pitch, Remsburg defended well. And we check in with Amanda Balliona. Amanda? Yeah, this Colorado State coaching staff being really patient with their defense, telling them, hey guys, we need disguise our looks longer. We need to, to protect better against the pitch. We also need to do a better job of tackling in the perimeter. All right, thank you, Amanda. Look, you don't prepare for the triple option in one week. You do it gradually. Still, when you change from a 4-3 to a 3-4 on a short week, there's got to be some logistics. It's tough, and you do prepare for it even back to spring, but you're not preparing against guys like we see out there for this Air Force offense now. Hammond will throw it down the middle, and Marcus Bennett, the intended receiver. Similar pattern to the one they almost scored on. And going back to that, we talked with Janzik yesterday, defensive coordinator for Colorado State. They started preparing for this triple option back in the spring and then every week for about five to ten minutes, maybe a period, two periods here there on Monday, usually a walkthrough day. They would rep it just to keep it fresh in their minds. But the issue, once again, is you're going against scout team players, guys who don't really know how to run the triple option. Now you're going against one of the best, guy, best teams in the country executing this offense. Olabisi Johnson made a fair catch signal, and they'll mark it at the 49. Air Force up 7 0. The college football season is underway. Carter Samuels over the bell, touchdown. Oh my goodness, another one handed grab. Cardinals inside the five. Hands in for a remarkable touchdown. San Diego State hangs on to upset 23rd ranked Arizona State. Thanksgiving in the Mountain West. 7 0 Air Force on top of Colorado State. Jerry Palm looks into his crystal ball and projects these bowl appearances. And of course, a lot hinges on the Saturday matchup with Utah State at Boise State, Nevada. Hawaii, San Diego State, Fresno State also headed to bowls. And look, Air Force sits at four and seven. There is a sliver of a chance that they get to a bowl game. If there are not enough teams to fill the slots. False start, offense, number 85. Five yard penalty, remains first down. And there are 78 total bowl slots. Right now, 72 have been claimed. There are six left. The problem for Air Force, there are 21 five win teams going into this weekend. And so the likelihood that a five and seven team will get selected, a little is slim. Really slim. But there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. But, but now, if, if you do get to a five and seven team, the, the way they select that five and seven team, I like this. They use the academic progress rate, which measures student athletes and their progress and their graduation. Northwestern is number one. Air Force is tied with Vanderbilt. The interesting thing there is Vanderbilt has five wins right now. Yeah. 
the good thing right now for this Air Force team, at least they can play thinking we still have a chance. This isn't like a late Saturday game, and maybe they've already been knocked out. So they got a little bit more juice this afternoon. Colin Hill scrambling on second down and 14. Garrett Capilla makes the stop. I don't know what it is. Every time Colorado State gets about the 50-yard line, it, it, I don't know if it's a mixture of Air Force just stepping up defense, guys aren't open. They got to figure out a way to cross the 40-yard line. This is three times now. They've been hovering right at 50, then they get to a third and long situation. I would, I would think here too, even if you get seven, eight yards maybe, get close to a first down, Mike Bobo may decide to go for it on fourth. Let's see if they can bite off a chunk here on third down and 12. Hill's in trouble and Air Force gets to him. Dropped at the 42 yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. Yeah, nothing open on the outside. Two man, bring a couple blitzers. Great coverage on the back end to get that sack. One quarter in the books. Colorado State Air Force, good rivalry in the Mountain West. 7 nothing Falcons. Fansville Kim is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Yes, it is. A, you got to be creative here on Thanksgiving with your tailgates. Now, the one difference with this game, the cadets, most of the cadets are not here. It is a tradition at the Air Force that the cadets get to go home for Thanksgiving. So what is normally a really large amount of cadets that are here in attendance, Many of you are probably watching uh, at home, so uh, welcome back to Colorado Springs. Your Air Force Falcons are playing quite well to start this rivalry game against Colorado State. Amy with a fair catch, and he'll hold on to it. Air Force has had three different quarterbacks start. Now, we've seen DJ Hammond start and play in this one. Isaiah Sanders has had some great moments, and Arian Worthman, the senior, we saw him start earlier this year as well. And it'll be interesting to see if Worthman, he is the senior, he is one of the leaders on this team, if he can somehow find a way to get in this game today if Troy Calhoun, but a lot of plays, but really Isaiah Sanders and DJ Hammond, they give this team a different option as an offense. They give them the ability to throw the football down the field, keep the defense honest. Something that Arian Worthman just could not get done early in the season when he was a starter. And you saw Sanders on the sideline there stretching. Hammond's going to give it to the dive back, and that's uh, an apt description of what Cole Fagan did there. He dives out for about three yards. Fagan's father, a, a terrific uh, NFLer, an offensive lineman for the San Francisco 49ers. Hammond had those great games against Navy and quick pitch there. Remsburg getting outside. Well defended. Jamal Hicks with another nice play on the edge. There's a big third down right now for Colorado State. If you're able to get this third down defensively and force Air Force to punt, you get the ball right about the 50 yard line again. That's kind of their kryptonite. Maybe they'll get a good punt return to get past the 40. But you've got to feel good, too, because your defense is staying off the field. They're getting a little bit of a breather and not just getting pounded by this run tack. Remsburg and Fagan in the backfield, along with Hammond. This is a third down and three. you got to be careful as a defense. They may pull it and throw the football. They fumble it. And it looked like Fagan got on it. Well, that's going to be a three and out and a nice stop there by Colorado State's D. And Hammond just tried to get there a hair bit too early. Sometimes as a quarterback, you get a little bit anxious, especially when you need to make so many reads. You got to read the end and then you got to read a pitch defender. You got to make sure you get the snap first. Stay in there, especially against this 3-4 defense because that center has to move even more to be able to cut off that nose tackle. I think you're right. This should be good field position. And over end kick, Olabisi Johnson waves off his teammates and lets it roll, and it's going to roll all the way inside the 35 down to the 31-yard line. Jake Conkey 
with a 56 yard punt. Mike Bobo and the Rams get the football when we return. Home Depot on CBS begins tomorrow, Arkansas and Missouri. Then Saturday, the 83rd Iron Bowl, Auburn and number one, Alabama. 25 game home win streak for Alabama, but of course, you never know in the Iron Bowl. And of course, the drive to Atlanta presented by Mercedes Benz, 230 Eastern, followed by State Farm College Football today. And that kicks off your college football Saturday, Ram College Football Playoff. A lot of fun games this weekend. We saw that Alabama Auburn game, Michigan, Ohio State. Big football. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sit down on your couch, enjoy some turkey, watch some good old football. You know, we, we tried to rent that costume. I was going to wear it the entire game. At a local uh, costume shop, but it, they were all sold out. And that's where the last one went. Well, right now, call it. Yeah, there it is. Hey, Colin Hill right now just seems a little bit off. He's past couple possessions. You see the first possession, seven plays, six plays. Good job. And then the last one, the sack to finish it off. Can they get back to running the ball a little bit more? Maybe put Adam Prentice back there at running back once again. He had some success. And also the quick throws, the quick out, the slants. Aaron Murray, you were a quarterback at Georgia and the all-time leading thrower and yardage and, and all of that in the SEC. Mike Bobo was your offensive coordinator. The advantage here for Colorado State is plain. We've talked about it. They have speed on the outside. Air Force cannot defend that. How do you in this offense exploit that? I think right now the issue is they're trying to hit too many home runs. They had an opportunity earlier. They just missed out on a long 60-yard touchdown, but they've had success when they get one-on-ones with the slant routes, the quick ends, the quick outs, get the ball to Collins' hands fast. And a lot of third down and longs. Hill, the throw in traffic, and it's incomplete. Williams was covered there. Zane Lewis, the junior, was all over him. Also, the issue right now, too, is you go back to when they've had success, it's running the football. Great job on the outside. That's a talented receiver in Preston Williams. He runs those slant routes to perfection. And Zane Lewis is right in his hip pocket the entire time, knocking that ball away. And once again, that's two three and outs for this defense. Andrew Smith is deep. Orion Stonehouse punt hangs up. And a fair catch. Right at the 25 yard line. Second quarter, Mountain West Air Force, a 7 0 lead. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Air Force 7 0 over Colorado State. Our Phillips 66 Athlete of the Week, Caden Remsburg. Now, that's quite an honor, but it's not even close to the honor he had a couple weeks ago. Right, Amanda Balionis? That is right, Rich, because Caden Remsburg, he had himself a day earlier this month after the Falcons took down New Mexico at home. He asked his teammates to help him set up for his second victory. That is when, of course, he proposed to his longtime girlfriend. They've been dating since middle school. Now, if you want to see how close this team really is, take a look at this video, because after he proposed, his teammates were maybe just as excited as he and his now new fiance Kaylee were. But the most nerve wracking part to me, when asked where he kept the ring, he said, oh, I just hit it in my backpack. <laughs> that was quite a moment and quite a game. And Fagan is loose and rumbling inside the 40. Fagan still going down to the 18 yard line. Cole Fagan. Big man on the move. Watch the front, the offensive line right here. I mean, that is a gaping hole. And Cole Fagan known as more the gritty nitty, gets you five, six yards, pulls off a tremendous run right there. And we just saw Caden Remsford with that 4-3 speed on that highlight. Cole Fagan said, I got some wheels too. I can take it 60. That was 56 yards. Hammond will keep it. And he's run down by Livingston Pagofi, the sophomore. So a big hitter for Air Force. And this is during the commercial. They were looking at that right hand and wrist area of Donald Hammond. 
And it that was after the fumbled snap. Yeah, because he pulled out a little bit early, so the ball most likely hit one of his fingers. Might have jammed something. And that went straight ahead. Pagofi takes down Taven Bordeaux. It's going to be interesting to see. We saw him and his, his wrist on the sideline right there. Third and long right here. If they're going to actually pass the ball, if he's capable of gripping it and ripping it. He seems to still be fumbling around with that right hand, so this may be a run. Play it safe and kick, kick a field goal to get this to 10 to nothing. Remsburg and Bordeaux. Hammond will throw it. End zone! Oh! Did he get it? Yes! Touchdown! Marcus Bennett! A juggling catch! And a two touchdown lead. Well, that answered all the questions if that hand was good or not, but what a catch and the concentration doing a 360, and that is a catch. Great job by Marcus Bennett. Again, his hands underneath the football. But that's watching it in the entire time right there, Rich. That's a great job going up. Bobble a little bit. Let me do a little pirouette. Watch it all the way in for the touchdown. And no bobble and no wiggle when he hit the turf. So the 56-yard run by Fagan sets up Hammond to Bennett. And just like that, Air Force up by two scores. And what a run by Cole Fagan, and then what a catch by Marcus Bennett going up. Again, it's a 14 to nothing. We got a ball game. Two touchdown lead for Air Force. Ten and a half left in this first half. Coming up at the half. It's our halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. Brent Stover, Brian Jones, Houston Nutt. Happy Thanksgiving to that trio. And a preview of all the weekend college football action now. Our research department worked long and hard on this. Notable Thanksgiving theme names. Brad Wing, Corn Elder, Jack Ham, of course. Evan Pilgrim's good. Tavian Feaster. How do they, I mean, look, this is Air Force. I would vent, I would toss in Fisher DeBerry. Longtime coach. I like it. If you need dessert, get the berry. Anthony Hawkins at the one for Colorado State. Good contain. Flag comes down. Ball sits right now at the 16-yard line. During the return, holding number 13 of the return team. At the distance to the goal, first down. Let's go back to the previous touchdown. You're going to see the safety right here gets out of position with the motion from Remsburg in the backfield, leaving one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with Marcus Bennett. And then look at Hammond right here. Sees his receiver, know he's going to be open, feels the pressure, especially from Josh Watson right in his face, takes it, delivers a dime for the touchdown. Now Colorado State has moved the football at times, but they've stalled out at midfield on three drives. And the inability to run it has been a problem. Capola makes the hit and the stop after a gain of four by Izzy Matthews. But the same game plan we see from Air Force's offense, they run the football, they get the four, four yards, get the five yards, get the third and short. That's what Colorado State needs to do right now. Run the football, whether it's Izzy Matthews, whether it's Adam Prentice, get to third and manageable and then use your big receivers, maybe even some quick screens on the outside, get them in space one-on-one. -on -one. Full of BC Johnson with the catch at the 19, and he's taken down. First down, gain of eight, Milton Bug on the coverage. And that's what I want to see. If you're going to throw the football, take those slants, take those quick outs. I know you want to hit the home runs. Listen, you got speed, you got height, you can take the top off this defense, but right now you need to stay on the field, you need to get some momentum. Take those slants and take those quick outs. Just the fourth completion by Colin Hill. Preston Williams has a couple of catches, but for just 18 yards. 
Hill on play action. That one was behind Cameron Butler, his tight end. And we go down below. Amanda Balionis. Amanda? Yeah, thanks, Rich. As you and Aaron talk about the offense needing to get it going, when you talk to the coaching staff, they say, you know, this team has had a great work ethic all season, but they're inconsistent. They do a great job in practice, but in games, they simply tighten up. They were saying, listen, it's more of a mental thing. It's become apparent that we really need to focus on developing leaders to stop that tightening up from happening on the field in the future. All right, thank you, Amanda. And, and Amanda and Aaron, uh, all of us feel this way watching Mike Bobo. It's great to see him moving better, feeling better. He has been through a medical nightmare this season. Nice move there by Matthews to the 30, and that'll brighten the day for Mike Bobo. Peripheral neuropathy is what he was battling in August, and he's had to deal with it the entire season. Uh, look at the move by AZ Matthews in the backfield. Great job. I want to go back to what Amanda was talking about, though. Guys playing a little bit tight in ball games. For me, it was the opposite. I mean, I was tight in practice. You got Coach Bobo right there. He was behind me in practice, just judging me, yelling at me, screaming at me. And then you get in the games, you're just playing. You just got to have fun. They just have to loosen up, go out there. Like I said, have a ball. You're playing on Thanksgiving. Go make some plays. Hill steps in and is sacked. Back of the 28. Lakota Wills and Micah Capra. And it's a great coverage on the outside. Capra up there, one on one. Does a great job engaging and then getting off. And then look at the coverage on the back end. One on one, not playing off. They're going to get lined up man on man against one of the best receivers in this conference. And Zane Lewis once again in his hip pocket. Second down, 15. Deflected and incomplete. And it was Jordan Jackson, the sophomore, that got a hand on it. And once again, we saw it the first, the first series of the game. Just a quick hitch on the outside. And as an offensive lineman, you have to cut. I know it's a slide protection, but you have to do something so these guys don't jump up there and tip that football. We used to tell our guys, just punch them right in the stomach. They want to jump up, get in the air, knock them out. They're not going to jump the rest of the game. And that's allowed by rule. It is. Knock them up. If he wants to jump, they can pay for it. Back foot throw, Hill, man open. That's Williams. Did he stay in bounds? He did at the 38-yard line. That's a nifty bit of tightrope walking by Williams. I think a little confusion on the outside. We're going to see yep, that right foot is down. I think Zane Lewis thought he had some help from his safety. You kind of saw him stutter for a split second. That's a great catch. And Air Force right, going to call a timeout. Timeout. Air Force. First of the half. 30 seconds in length. Time out on the field. We'll step aside. Colorado State driving down 14 nothing. Aaron, you think Air Force burned this time out to give the replay officials a little more time? Yeah, I think they wanted to make sure that Williams got that foot in. But you see it right there clearly. No juggling of the football. The right foot is down. This is college. All you need is one foot. You don't need that second foot to get down. Looks likely Williams will be in the NFL next year, so he's going to have to start practicing, making sure he gets two feet in. But right now, that's good. And that's a big play for Colorado State in this offense. And of course, the sideline and Williams were so key last week in that Hail Mary that he caught for what looked like the game winning touchdown, but he had stepped just barely on the line in the pattern and then came back in to make the catch, which is illegal. And that wiped out the score and ended the game for Utah State. That one is just a flat out drop, it looked like. And you don't see that very often from Williams. And ball a little bit behind, but once again, this Air Force defense, they're playing about seven, eight yards. They're mixing it up, though. They're keeping Williams guessing on the outside. Sometimes they're going to press him. Sometimes they're going to give him a little bit more respect. If they do, I like those quick outs. You just got to be a little bit more accurate as a quarterback and throw it right at the sideline. Matthews brought down Garrett Capola. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by Golden Corral. Colorado State is moving the football. 
they've moved it and they just can't finish drives. And once again, we talked about last possession. I think this is four down territory for here right now. So they don't need to get all six, seven yards. They could just run a quick hitch, maybe a quick out route. Hill firing, got his man, Williams, touchdown, 34 yards. Finally, they're in. It's a great job on the outside, using his eyes. He had a quick out, drove it with his eyes, the cornerback, the safety, everyone bit on it, and then left Preston Williams wide open on the corner route over top. And that was a great delivery in stride for the touchdown. Hopefully get this game to 14 to seven. And now the Rams are starting to exploit that speed and size that they've got with Williams. Two big catches from Hill on that drive. Kick is no good. And they missed the kick. And much needed drive for this Colorado State offense. Great job. Utilizing their big, talented receiver, Preston Williams, for the touchdown. Get this to 14 to 6. Spectacular Colorado sky on this Thanksgiving. 14 6 Air Force. In our installment of Armed Forces Greatest Legends, oh, Wes Steelhammer. Our old buddy Adam Archuleta loved him some Wes Steelhammer. Air Force safety picked off a pass in this 2014 upset of then number 21 Colorado State had 18 career picks 227 tackles in his Air Force career. So Colorado State has finally scored impressively 92 yards on 10 plays. Preston Williams had four catches on that drive. What did you see on that touchdown? Hey, it's a beautiful design from Coach Bobo. You're going to see just a quick out and then a corner over top versus a cover two defense. And at the top right here, I want to see right there, get the corner back to turn his hips to the out route. Great job by Cohen Hill utilizing his eyes and then understanding he has that sweet spot down the field to locate Preston Williams and then throws a great ball. But it starts with the shoulders, it starts with the eyes. Get the cornerback to drive on that underneath route and then just lay it up for the touchdown. Back to work goes Air Force. And Fagan over the right side chews up about six yards. Fagan had a 56 yard run that set up the last score for the academy. Second down and four. What's the best passing down and distance for an Air Force team? I think right now, if you want to pass, this would be it. But I think you want to eat up some clock right now. You want to finish this half with the ball in your hand. Fagan straight ahead. That'll move the sticks. Another six yards. And I'll tell you what, this Air Force rushing attack has been done. We saw the first drive marching up the entire field for the touchdown. And then Cole Fagan. Saying, hey, I know I'm good for four or five, but let me get 56-2. Taking it for the big run to set up another touchdown. They've been doing a great job at the line of scrimmage, creating some holes for those running backs. Joseph Saucier is in right now. Fagan is already at 99 yards. He had a career high 116 against Wyoming last week. Saucier on the pitch, turns the corner, has a nice pickup. We'll see where they mark him. Right about the 45 yard line. That's a gain of seven. Yeah, and this brings up second down and short. I think right now, I mean, these are all good passing situations. You get in the second and short, especially with this type of offense, to take a shot. But if I'm them, I'd rather just hold it. I'd rather continue to run it. You're having success right now. Eat up this clock and don't give Colorado State a chance to get the ball back at the end of this half. Fagan again, another quick pop. And he's already over 100 yards. Damian Dickens, the junior, made the stop. 
And once again, they check in. They see that. Look at this gap right here. I mean, there's no one there in this 3-4 defense. And then great blocking up front. But that's the same run we saw earlier for a big gain. And once again, they're, they're, they're taking advantage of this 3-4 defense and that empty gap right here. The safety's got to be a little bit more downhill, and those linebackers need to fill a little bit faster as well. Fagan straight ahead. Why the change from the 4-3, which Colorado State has run all year, to the 3-4? What's the advantage against the option? The, the advantage against the option is you get to play a little bit more balanced. And if you want to play a cover four defense so your safeties are re responsible for a fourth of the field and so are your corners, allows them to be a little bit more downhill to defend this run. I think the safeties just need to react a little bit faster against these fullback dives. You saw Jeff Jancic there in, in that shot, the guy to the far left. Kentucky, South Florida, was it Georgia and Tennessee in the SEC as well? This is Saucier who cuts inside and he gets down to the 32 yard line and he rips off a 10 yard run. Trey Sutton made the stop. And I was talking with Coach Jancic, you see right there, and I asked him before the game, I said, when's the last time you faced a triple option, option team? And it's, it's since he played or was a coach at Georgia going against Georgia Tech. And he told us this is a completely different type of option. This is more zone based where you look at Georgia Tech, a lot more cutting from the offensive line. Hammond's throw. That's Fagan with the catch. And he's upended there. Jamal Hicks has made a number of stops already. He's the number three tackler on this Colorado State team from his strong safety spot. Yeah, great job. You're doing a great job with the pitch game. I want you to see the defense and the flow, especially from the safety Andrew, over here. Time out. Everyone's flowing one direction, allows the fullback running back to slip out the backside for the big game, the pass game right there. It's Emmanuel Jones who is down. You see a good number of players from SEC territory. A lot of Georgia kids on this Colorado State team. That's not only from from Mike Bobo, but of course Jim McElwain, who was here, who was the offensive coordinator at Alabama before Bobo arrived. Yeah, Emmanuel Jones up in the top. Look, he's just going to get a cut right there, legal by the offensive line. That's what they're taught to do in this offense. You see pretty much all four offensive linemen from the left guard over taking down the defensive line. That's why they're taught, protect your knees. You got to utilize your hands as a defender to be able to shed those cut blocks, get off them, disengage, and then get to the ball carrier. Fagan straight ahead inside the 20. Down to the 18-yard line. That's another first down. We heard we heard the name Georgia Tech a lot this week in preparation for Colorado State because you know Mike Bobo at Georgia, Jeff Jancic in, in the SEC, uh, also at Georgia. That's a rivalry game that's played this weekend. Georgia, Georgia Tech. Well, in talking with Coach Bobo, he realizes not just the difficulty for the defense, but also difficulty for the offense. He went back and studied the games this offseason versus Air Force versus Georgia Tech and figured out, hey, we're going to lose about two or three possessions in this game. So we have to take advantage of the offense each and every time we're on the field. They get on first and 10 to the 15, and that chews up four yards. And right now, Colorado State does not have an answer for Cole Fagan, who's well over 100 yards, and this very good Air Force offensive line. Injury timeout. That is Griffin Landrum, who is down. Landrum, the senior. Yeah, the only senior on that offensive line. It is a young offense. He's one of only a few guys that will be leaving after this season. Four other guys on the offensive line, the two quarterbacks, bunch of running backs. They do lose Bennett and Ronald Cleveland, but everyone else is back. This is a young offense that's been pretty impressive this season. Landrum, senior. Yeah, just get rolled up on by his own guy right there. That's the issue too with all the cut blocking and everything and, and pretty close to each other. Sometimes you, you knock out your own guy. Second down six. 
You can see the time of possession on the drive is rolling as we speak. Already over four and a half minutes. Two and a half left first half. Air Force on the ground dominant so far. Cole Fagan straight ahead. Fagan now has a career high. He's about 120 yards on 13 carries. And, and, and he's having a great day right now. We talked about his game last week. Is a career high last week with 116 versus Wyoming. Already passed that with 120 today. And we still have a whole other half of football to play. He's doing a great job when his number's called. But right now it's going to be interesting. If Air Force gets a first down right here, does Coach Mike Bobo maybe start using some timeouts in hopes of hopefully getting his offense out there one more time? Christian Mallard is in the game. Mallard, a junior, his first touch. Quinn Brennan came up and made the hit. And so now you're looking at fourth down and a long two. I, I think you had to kick the field goal. Right now, one possession game. You kick it. Get to the 17 to 6, feel a little bit more comfortable, but I'd milk this clock right now. If, if Colorado State does not want to call a timeout, maybe Air Force, I would run this all the way down. I mean, possibly even call a timeout if you want to to make sure Colorado State does not have enough time to maybe drive down the field and put seven or six or seven or three points on the board. Jake Conkey has had a solid year. He's seven of nine. Clean snap, and he just sneaks it around the upright. So they get the three points. Troy Calhoun and Air Force stretch the lead. And Mike Bobo and the Rams still have some time to work with. A minute and nine seconds left. Cole Fagan's been diamond, dynamite so far. Yeah, we talked about last week versus Wyoming. Dominant, and then tonight, the short runs, the big 56-yard run right there. There are no answers from this Colorado State defense. And it's tough. It is really tough when you go a fullback with running back mentality, with running back ability, gets the ball in a blink of an eye. He's at the linebacker position and, and with less than one second. He's just tough to bring down. And right now, he's playing with a lot of confidence as well. It's rare in this game that, that you have fullbacks that run it these days with all the different offense and the spread look and the RPOs. It's even rarer that you get a fullback that is on the line as quickly as the Air Force fullbacks are, and in particular, Fagan. Well, and this is why Air Force runs this type of offense. They understand they're not going to recruit maybe the best athletes, but the way this offense goes and how quick it can hit with the fullback position, they should be able to get three or four yards every single play. Anthony Hawkins. Fair catch, and it'll come out to the 25. CBS Super Bowl season continues on Sunday. Doubleheader Jets and Patriots, and then the Steelers are up the road in Denver to take on the Broncos, and the day kicks off with NFL Today, presented by Jeep at 12 Eastern. And Lamar Jackson for, gonna get his second start to Baltimore. First Oakland played well last week. It's going to be interesting. Can he hold up and run the ball 20 plus times every single week? Our Amanda Balionis is on that game. So he'll be headed to Baltimore after this one. Hill off play action. That's Williams who swung through the backfield and hung out for a little bit of a screen. And not a big gain. He's going to get to the 27 gain of two. Great catch right there, but you got to be more accurate. If you want to be able to get those those yaks, those yards after catch, it starts with the quarterback being accurate, but still a smart play by Preston Williams. Understanding two or three yards doesn't mean anything. You saw that last drive. They had some success. See if they can continue with this momentum. Hill, Williams again, and this time covered by Zane Lewis. And that went just out of his arm. Once again, Zane Lewis, hip for hip. Actually, a very accurate ball. William just got that left hand a little locked up with number six on the outside. Couldn't get up there to help him make that catch. 38-yard line. Wyatt Bryan has a big leg. 55 yards is his long. But so a third down to convert and a long way to go in 56 seconds. Blitz comes. Hill. Fires to the sideline, and that's Preston Williams, who seems to be the intended receiver now on every throw for Colorado State. And once again, they moved him around a little bit, put him in the slot. And what a catch going down. Fingertips. 
But great job by Cohen Hill. Had some pressure, felt it, retreated a little bit, threw off his back foot, trusted if he threw it to a spot that Preston Williams would be at the end of it to catch it. Rams still have all their timeouts, down to 50 seconds. Hill is flushed, escapes, and he's got a lot of room to go. Midfield, flag is down, and so is Hill. And the flag is back at the 30-yard line, which would indicate a hold. Holding. Offense. Number 24. 10-yard penalty. We play first down. That's Izzy Matthews with the hole right there. He does not agree. Top of your screen is going to be locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Just tackles him. You see that left hand wrap around. And that's what causes it right there. You have to lock up, get your hands inside. Because anytime your hands get wide, whether you're an offensive lineman or running back, and you kind of bear hug a defender, you're going to see some yellow on the field like we saw that last time. That is a crushing call. It wipes out the game. The ball was all the way into Air Force territory. And now it's first down and 20 from the 26. Hills throw, caught there, guess who? Preston Williams. He's across the 40 to the 42-yard line, short of the first down, timeout called. It'll bring timeout. up. Timeout, Colorado State, first of the half, 30 seconds in length. Second down and five after a 15-yard pickup. Our independent craft brewery, top 25 scoreboard. All right, not a lot of action today. Heck, it's Thanksgiving. But it all picks up tomorrow. You've got Oklahoma, West Virginia tomorrow. The Apple Cup should be great with Washington and Washington State, two top 20 teams. And then Saturday, we spill into that Georgia-Georgia Tech rivalry, Michigan-Ohio State. Go to the bottom right. Utah State 21, Boise State 23. Winner of that wins the Mountain Division and will face Fresno State in the Mountain West Championship game. That's yeah, two great football teams right there. Going to the blue turf is always tough. Uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch, but a lot of good got a lot of good football this weekend. Yeah, and of course the Iron Bowl on CBS with uh, Alabama at number one, Auburn. And this game is in Tuscaloosa. A long win streak there, 25 straight for Alabama. Another throw, another catch. Williams again, and he's in. Touchdown, Colorado State, 58 yards. I tell you what, this Preston Williams is impressive, but Colin Hill, he learned from his mistakes last week. Understand, let it rip. That's what Coach Mike Bobo said. Just trust your receivers and throw the ball as far as you can. He's done it a couple of times now. And I tell you what, Preston Williams, he is a special receiver on the outside. Great job. Remember, Brian missed an extra point. On the first touchdown, and he knocks this one through. Well, they didn't even need the full minute. Colorado State's Colin Hill to Preston Williams. And it's just one-on-one -on, -one on the the top right here with Preston Williams. Zane Lewis has done a tremendous job in his hip pocket, even right here. That's great coverage. That is phenomenal coverage. You are in his hip pocket. It is just a better job and an absolutely perfect ball. You talk about from a quarterback position, when you throw these go balls, throw it over the outside shoulder, throw it away from the DB, don't give him a chance to make a play, and then utilize Preston Williams' 6'4 frame on the outside. Well, we told you, Colorado State's going to throw it, Air Force going to run it, and so far in the first half, that's held. Yeah, these two, I mean, they're, they, they are what each offense is about. Air Force, about running, nitty-gritty. Cole Fagan having a tremendous day. And then Colorado State, they like to throw it down the field. Preston Williams having a tremendous first half. Another big touchdown on that last play. Now, you see the 13 targets for Preston Williams. Eight consecutive targets, including that touchdown throw. So Colin Hill has really been locked in on his six foot four junior wide receiver. Which just reminds me a little bit when we had A.J. Green my freshman year and Bobo said, just throw it to A.J. Green. Just throw it to him. Covered, not covered, whatever it is, he's going to make a play. That's what Preston Williams is doing right now. That's to give a freshman quarterback a lot of confidence. Yeah, it does. I tell you, when you look out there and you see A.J. Green match up with someone, you're like, all right, I, I like my chances. And that's the same thing right now when Colin Hill looks out there at Preston Williams and he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
it's not 50-50. You throw these balls, that's not 50. It's 80-20. It's there's a great chance that he's going to go up there and make a play or you're going to get a pass interference just because of his large frame at 6'4", 210. Air Force going to take a knee here. Oh, no, it's a little fake saucier around the left side, and he's got it to the 50, cuts back to the 42-yard line. It's Saucier. He's down. The clock has stopped for the change to move. Air Force, timeout. Air Force has got two timeouts. So this was to be just, hey, take a knee, but not really. A little okey doke, not so fast. I think they've been saving this the entire season. This is a play you keep in your back pocket. You've been practicing just for fun. And you're like, hey, it's the last game of the season. Might as well use it right now. And that gives them an opportunity. They cross the 50 yard line. Maybe get a couple more plays to get in field goal range. Saucier, a junior, a lot of the skill kids for Air Force will be coming back next year. And Saucier, along with the Remsburg and Fagan, uh, that right ankle in the turf. Yeah, it just gets caught just a little bit there. So Trey Calhoun now, we saw Colorado State take about 40 seconds to get down and get in the end zone. There's 16 seconds left here, two timeouts. They are not yet in field goal range. They're gonna need another eight to 10 yards. Conkey's long this year is 43 yards. There's a heated conversation going on in front of the Colorado State bench with the referee and Mike Bobo. And I'll bet it had to do with that play in the formation. Yeah, I'm sure he's not happy because it's a defense. Quarterback's about to take a knee. You want to respect it. You kind of play off. You're relaxed. And then they pull a stunt like that. So I'm sure that side of the football is not too happy about that play. There's Conkey. Well, they, ro they rolled the clock on ready for play. Air Force wanted a timeout, and they're going to lose three seconds in the exchange. It was an injury timeout, but the clock starts on ready for play. Timeout, Air Force. Second timeout of the half. Please put 16 on the game clock. Little lobbying there by uh, Troy Calhoun. They get the three seconds back. I think just a little miscommunication. Good news right there, though. Saucier walking off the field. A little gingerly, but yeah, you see it gets played, blown to pull it start. You know, once it's set and ready for play, they restart the clock. Mike Bobo wasn't happy with the last play in formation. Saucier's on his way to the locker room. And I don't think he's happy about putting three seconds back on the clock. It's been a very frustrating past couple plays for Coach Bobo, the fake, and then three seconds put back on the clock. Back to the trick play right here. You see Carlos say they're just relaxed, you know, respecting that they're going to take a knee. And then Air Force with a little trickery, hopefully get some, steal some points before the halftime. So, one timeout left, 16 seconds left. DJ Hammonds has a touchdown throw, going to go deep, has a man, incomplete. Bennett was open. Hammonds pass intended. Just out of his reach. Oh, he had him. He had him. Just ran right through the coverage. Safety kind of was sitting, expecting this offense is just going to try to get to field goal range. They're not going to take a shot. And Bennett ran right by the safety. 
Heyman put enough air under it, just threw it a little bit too far for his receiver. That would have been a nice touchdown then in the halftime. At 10 seconds, little pitch right. Remsburg cuts in. They'll have to burn a timeout here. And they do. Five seconds. And I don't know if Jake Conkey. Air Force. Third of the half. 30 seconds in length. I don't know if Jake Conkey has this kind of leg. This would be about a 55 yarder. His long is 43. Now we are at altitude. And it's a beautiful day that the elements are not an issue. There's really no wind uh, to worry about. It looks like they're going to kick it. It is a beautiful day down there in the field before the game. Not a lot of wind going on right now. Flags are pretty still. I think in their mind, they just feel more comfortable at least trying to get three points. This offense really isn't built to throw the football, especially 35 plus yards down the field. And I'm surprised Colorado State doesn't have a guy back to maybe catch it. That's a, a good thought on Iron Bowl weekend. Yeah, Iron Bowl weekend right there. The big game was it three years ago, four years ago with the, the return to get Auburn the win. Long field goal. It looks like they're instead going to try to sell out to block it. And it's, it's Thanksgiving, so second of the half. you might need a little ice. Yeah, a little ice. I, I would, I, if I'm Coach Bobo right here, though, I would put a guy back. I mean, why not? Give yourself a chance if this kick is short. I mean, this is going to be one of his longest attempts of his career. If it's short, you never know what could happen. You look at the other side, it's a bunch of offensive linemen, guys who don't really know how to tackle. You get one of your speedsters back there to catch it. We've seen it happen multiple times this year. Someone this year and in the past, someone returning it for a big play. I think they're going to do and that now. They're doing it now. And they are indeed going to do you that. see Williams back there jogging back. I like the decision. So his longest this year is 43. This is 55. You see Preston Williams back there underneath the crossbar. The kick, he's got enough, and he missed it. Just wide. Had the distance. Air That's Force the end of the first half. took their shot. An entertaining first half. Mike Bobo and Colorado State were down two scores, and now they're down by four. And enough leg right there. Look good for just a split second. Woo. Missed it by probably less than a foot right there. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're headed to New York for all the highlights of this one and preview the Iron Bowl and all of that this weekend. 1713 Air Force. For watching the CBS Sports Network Halftime Report, powered by Ram Trucks. Hey there and welcome alongside Houston Nutt and Brian Jones. I'm Brent Stilber. Good football game here on Thanksgiving Day on CBS Sports Network. Air Force leading Colorado State 17-13. Coach, your thoughts? Entertaining game all the way up to the end of the first half. You think they're just going to run the ball, uh, run the clock out? No. Keep giving it to Cole Fagan. Career day, 119 yards. This long run, this next run is his longest of his career, guys. 56 yards, it sets up a touchdown, does a good job. But here's the problem. If you're Colorado State, mm -hmm. Got to find that man. Got to find that man. Like we were finding that turkey a moment ago before we came on. Got to find Preston Williams. We talked about it, talked about him in, in the pregame show. This guy is outstanding. Of the 10 Ooh. completions on the afternoon, he has eight of them. Of course, two touchdowns. Right now, 13 touchdowns on the season. That's second. Oh. Tied for second in the FBS. What a grab yeah, here. Beautiful. Created some separation and was able to uh, corral the football and get in the end zone. He is the key to Colorado State's success in hopes of winning this ball game. Eight catches, 171, and two touchdowns in one half of football. They trail 17 to 13. Much more to come here at halftime. They're slinging it on the other side as well. DJ Hammond from Marcus Bennett right there. Air Force by four. It's 17-13 at the break. Colorado State's Preston Williams for the sixth time this season with 100 yards in a game. He's at that point halfway through. Eight catches, two of them for touchdowns. Of course, Thanksgiving 
is a day to give thanks for those we know and even those we once knew. U.S. Air Force Captain Chris Stover falls in the latter category. He graduated from the Academy in 2008, eventually becoming a Pave Hawk helicopter pilot, one who was respected and loved by all who knew him. Chris was one of those people you're going to like him and you're going to be a want to be with him. You're going to be want to want to be around him. You wanted to be on his team. His outlook on life was live life to the fullest, have as much fun as you can and drag everybody with you and let them have fun too. Chris was a math whiz. You know, he was a straight A student. He was one of the best in high school and uh, you know, he uh, he chose the academy. Chris loved to fly. Helicopters in particular because they do things. They help people. Flying helicopters and flying search and rescue is sort of that perfect blend of his love for flying and sort of this technical skill piece and being able to kind of challenge himself and push himself. They're combat ready, which means they fly with guns on their aircraft, which allows them to fly into combat to pull individuals out of different situations. He was deployed to Iraq. He was deployed to Afghanistan. His last deployment was to Sicily on a naval base. Chris had over 100 rescues during his time of deployments. And there were a few dogs along the way, too. The work that they do is pretty critical in terms of being able to save lives of other individuals. That's actually the motto, combat search and rescue, is these things we do that others may live. Chris was preparing to deploy to Afghanistan. Uh, they were going out to essentially do a check ride uh, for uh, the crew and they took off and were able to kind of drop off the pararescue jumpers that were on board their helicopter. During that time frame, um, a flush of birds uh, flew up from out of a marsh uh, very unexpectedly. The first helicopter went over, scared the geese, and they went straight up and Chris's helicopter ran right into them and knocked both pilots out, knocked out their gyro, and down it went. We're talking a matter of 10 seconds between being here and not being here. <laughs> I think Chris's life represents, in a lot of ways, you know, that idea that others may live. He's given shoes off his feet to his cross-country teammates in high school who couldn't afford shoes. That was his thing in life. He loved to help people. He filled the glass. You know, it wasn't half full, it wasn't half empty, it wasn't empty. It was full all the time, 24-7. I think that's the legacy as a family that we've held on to is Chris wouldn't want us to stop living. He'd want us to kind of charge forward and find the things that allow us to be happy and to love life. There's always a great big grin when he was happy from ear to ear. I miss it the most. We'd like to send a thank you to Chris's family for opening up their doors and their hearts to share their stories about him. Guys, just another example of the dangers that await the players on the field for Air Force after graduation. In fact, in our game today, 30 seniors playing in their final home game. Several of them will now head to pilot training when it's over with. In fact, Troy Calhoun, the head coach, even thinks it's a record number. Uh, it's just unbelievable. We're watching the game. We like to watch football. But to think now they go and protect us, just have an awesome respect for the Stover family, the wife, our hearts and prayers, thoughts go with them. Yeah, a little insight into the harrowing situations that all the, them are, are faced with and uh, couldn't say enough about the courage and, and the honor with which they serve. Yeah. Okay. More to come here on the Ram Trucks Halftime Report after the break. Oh, afternoon turning towards night here in the Mountain West. Air Force at home and on top, 17 to 13. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray. This was a fun game in the first half and a really even game in terms of yardage, time of possession. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We talked about it to start this game. Air Force, they run the ball well. Colorado State not so great against stopping the run and then flipping it. Colorado State's ability to throw the football we knew was going to be great this game. 
Well, Cole Fagan was the guy we thought would run it, and man, did he ever. Oh, he's had a tremendous day. Career game last week versus Wyoming, having a better game already in the first half. Deep runs, the nitty gritty. Look at this contact right here. Lowering the shoulder, delivering the boom, and then an easy touchdown right there. All right, now through the air, we thought that Preston Williams would be a weapon. And man, did he have a great first half. Uh, I think it's a mixture of Preston Williams, but then Colin Hill too. I mean, look at the ball placement. A lot more confident quarterback utilizing those one-on-ones on the outside. Humana first half stats, yard per play right down the middle. Yeah, it's been great. I think they're also not on this at the moment, but time of possession. Colorado State's keeping up. Right now it's about 17 to 12, but they're hanging in there. They have a couple great drives in that second quarter. They just got to figure out a way to stop this triple option. And then for Air Force defense, can they win some more one-on-one -on -one battles on the outside? Air Force gets the football to start the second half. Fair catch called for and made by Andrew Smith, Amanda Balionis. Yeah, I spoke to Coach Calhoun, and he said offensively he's really happy with their fullback production, but defensively they were going to meet at the half and talk about changing up some of those coverages in effort to contain Williams a little bit more. Coach Bobo said he talked to his guys at the half about poise and confidence. He said if you want to know more about that speech, Aaron Murray has heard it many times. He also said they're doing a good job at staying patient, but they need to limit the penalties and play a full 30 minutes to win this game. Hey, Amanda, temperature's not dropping. How is it down there? You know, <laughs> depending on what sideline you're on it's okay it's a little bit colder on this air force sideline because the sun has not seen it but not bad we can't complain all right cole fagan gets the first carry just like the first half the first carry the i want to say eight yards in a cloud of dust but it's field turf so maybe it's some of those little rubber little pellets pebble, little pebbles in there it's the same play we highlighted to start the game they're going to continue to run this 3-4 defense and the linebackers aren't filling fast enough you're going to see just a simple dive to the fullback hit it right there in the b gap and get off those eight, nine, ten yard runs. Second down, two. Sanders will throw. Pressure on him. Deep shot and overthrows Marcus Bennett. Bennett caught a touchdown catch. It was a circus catch. And then Hammond overthrew him on what would have been a long touchdown in the first half. A lot of action going back there. A little bit of pressure in his face. You gotta, you gotta stay in there though as a quarterback. He saw him dip a little bit there. I know his hand was banged up a little bit in that second quarter. You have to deliver a little bit more of an accurate pass to give your receiver an opportunity. We saw when Marcus Bennett has a chance, he can make some pretty incredible catches. DJ Hammonds, Fagan is so quick to the hole. You just don't see that in the in the college game right now. It just it hits so fast. It's so tough on a defense when the ball carry a split of a second. Oh, he's already at the linebacker position. I mean, he's seven yards before a linebacker or safety even touches him. There now this is the problem, Rich, when you have a quarterback who can throw the football. You see these safeties are a little bit hesitant because they don't want one of these wingbacks to run by him. So they're, they're, they're not coming downhill nearly as fast. 136 yards for Fagan. And you can add three more. Josh Watson, Trey Thomas made the stop. How did you think the 3-4 defense, which is new this week for Colorado State, fared? At times, we saw a little bit in, the, in that first quarter after the long drive given up. This defense kind of settled in a little bit. But right now, it's it's the defensive line. And more importantly, it's that defensive front. And Damian Dickens, number 99, needs to do a, be do a better job against the center of Air Force, getting off the block and hitting the fullback. Quick pitch and great support from the side. Rashad Ajayi sealed the play, and Josh Watson came in to finish off Caden Remsburg. And those are the plays you have to make. If Air Force is going to pitch the ball, Josh Watson's going to make the play. And that's Watson who's down, and now he hops back up. Great job getting it around the defender, getting it around the offensive guy. And putting Air Force in a third and long situation right here. There's the hit by Watson. And he's off to the sideline, at least for a play. So a third and nine now for this Air Force offense. Hammond hit as he throws, up for grab. 
Dobbs and a flag is down. It's incomplete. Jamal Hicks on the coverage and the fact that it was underthrown. Gerard Saunders came back for the ball. And it's going to be an, another hit below the a low hit on the quarterback too. So that's another personal penalty. So there's going to be two penalties on the Colorado State defense right here. And you see right here, Heyman back in the pocket. And they're going to protect the quarterback, especially below the waist. There are two fouls by the defense. Pass interference, number seven of the defense. A penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, low hit to the quarterback, number 12. That penalty's accepted. 15 yards, automatic first down. Cameron Carter with the low hit. Yeah, like we talked about, they're going to protect the quarterbacks in the pocket right there, especially the low hits. But that, that's what we took a few plays ago. Give your receivers the opportunity. These, these safeties are retreating. You're going to make a catch or a good chance you get a P.I. like you did that pass play. Fagan straight ahead to the 35-yard line. It was a contentious end to the first half for Mike Bober. Remember, he had a, a couple of heated discussions with the officials. One thing that might be bothering him here, and it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to add them up and compare them. Air Force does not have a penalty in this football game, and Colorado State now has five for a total of 30 yards. Look how close the linebackers are now playing. They know they've been hurt with that fullback dive. There it is, fullback dive to the 21. Cole Fagan is just carrying this offense on his back and the defense. Hey, they're low. I mean, look at all the guys. You should not be able to run against this front, especially with how low the linebackers are. But the offensive line, they're doing a great job to kick out blocks. I mean, I know Cole Fagan does not take anything away from him, but he's not getting touched until seven, eight yards down the field. Give a lot of credit to the big uglies up front. 160 yards on 18 carries. And that one to the 16-yard line. Armed Forces football is proudly sponsored by USAA. And to start this game, Air Force's first possession was a thing of beauty, scripted out for success. And who's that offensive line you've been talking about? Yeah, and once again, and this is point of the game. End of the third, you'll see it and more into the fourth quarter. This offense line continued to take over and dominate. See, Christopher Mitchell has been in the mix. Griffin Landrum left with an injury in the first half. Bordeaux spelling Fagan. And Trey Thomas brings him down, but another first down and another impressive Air Force drive. You see Colorado State, they're getting a little bit frustrated by these fullback dives over and over again. They somewhat overloaded the blitz, and listen, there's nothing Mike Bobo can do. He's just hoping to get his offense on the field. Because they were pretty electric to finish that second half, that first half off. This is the first possession of the third quarter. Tenth play of the drive. Four and a half minutes in. Bordeaux is inside the five, and he's down to the three. Livingston Pagofi made the stop for Colorado State. And right now, just keep, keep feeding the fullback. Got a few downs, possibly go for it on fourth down. This defensive line seems to be retreating a little bit. Your offensive line has some confidence. I'd expect a few more dives right up the middle at the heart of this defense. Bordeaux in the backfield and he'll get it again left side this time and this time he's planted Josh Watson and Jamal Hicks I think the way Colorado State's offense finished the first half I had bet you anything this is four down territory for Air Force so they can once again get a fullback dive see if they can punch it in if not then get by line back up and try for a fourth and maybe one or two Cole Fagan's back in On third and goal. That is Remsburg, and he shorts 
And so now is the test if it's four down territory because it's fourth and goal from the one. And this is what this offense is built for. It's built again fourth and short situations. You either look for a QB sneak. They've done it multiple times this year with Donald Hammond, 6'2", 210, strong lower body, able to get you that nitty gritty one yard if he has to. And then a hey, win in doubt, give it to Cole Fagan right at the middle. He's lined up right there. You get him a little head of steam. Look at See if he punch it in. Look at the Rams. It's a quarterback sneak. Hammond is close. Officials no sign yet. No sign. Hammond at the bottom of the pile. And he didn't make it. He did not make it. Colorado State has held on fourth and goal from the one. It's going to be interesting. It's such a huge pile. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it or not. At first, it looked like he got through. Yeah, I think he's in. I think that's a touchdown, Rich. It's going to be close. Boy, it's tight. I mean, it's, you just got to cross the plane, touch the white line, and you're in. Now, is the original call holds an enormous amount of weight. Yes. You have to be able to say another down the line look coming. You have to be able to say that he was in 100% without any doubt there's the ball uh, I don't know if it gets across it's, it's the line. right on it it is right on it it's tough though I, I don't great job by Watson though number 55 plays dead and by number 52 yeah it, plays, it, it dead, plays right dead right there, there. I, I don't think you can overturn this I don't know that there's I mean, definitive... we're place this I mean the ball literally right now on the That's field almost do. The ruling on the field stands. Colorado State, first down. Not enough evidence to overturn, not enough evidence to confirm. Call stands. That's an enormous goal line stand by Colorado State. Only 16 days to go in the countdown to America's game. Army Navy presented by USAA on CBS Sports. And it's our honor to present retired U.S. Air Force Technical Sergeant and Purple Heart recipient Ben Clark, who is with Amanda Balionis. Yeah, I'm here with Ben and his family on Thanksgiving. And first of all, for, thank you so much for your service, the way you protect us and our country. And this is just a small, I think, token of, grat of, of gratitude when you were awarded a house mortgage free for you and your family. What was that phone call like and what does that mean to you to be recognized in that way? I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of people go down range, they get injured during combat and they come back and they don't know where they're going to end up, how far you're going to get, how behind you're going to get, you know, and it just gives you a little bit of security and wealthful helpfulness from these great corporations that are nonprofit to step up and provide your family with all this care and support. Do you think your kids realize what a hero dad was until today? Were they like, oh my gosh, dad, you're a big deal. I, I, I don't think they really know. I mean, it's going to take a couple years. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for your service. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thank you. Rich. What, a, what an incredible Thanksgiving. Thank you, Amanda. A mortgage-free house for a Purple Heart recipient here in Colorado Springs. Play action. He's going to throw it. Hill takes a deep shot. Ola B.C. Johnson with a catch and has caught at the 50-yard line. That is a great play fake by Colin Hill. Hard play action fake. You see the safeties downhill. Ola B.C. number 81 is going to do a stutter like he's going to block the safety and then shoot up field. Great job by Milne Bug, though. Number four doesn't bite on it, but still just a better throw and a better catch by Johnson on the outside. And you talk about defense trying to give you some momentum offensively. That throw takes the football out to midfield after a goal line stand. Colin Hill's numbers continue to rise. 
play was so effective that the uh, first down chains even bit on the play fake. That's always a scary play action, especially in your own end zone. To sell out like that, you're pretty much turning your back to the defense. Don't really know what's going on. You're just going to trust that your offense line is going to give you time and your receiver is going to make it sell it enough to be able to get open downfield. And important that they got the pass to Olabisi Johnson. Remember, Hill targeted Preston Williams. The chain broke. Please reset the game clock to 729. Start on my signal. Eight consecutive targets. Two touchdowns to Preston Williams to end that first half, and it's Ola B.C. Johnson who has the big catch there, a 48-yard reception, and now first and ten. Air Force shows blitz. He'll pull it, fire it. Ola B.C. Johnson, another catch. All of a sudden, Johnson's got some room. Well, it's because you see once again the safety up top going to buy in the play action and just a little bang eight, seven step seam route from Ola BC. And right. they're playing right now, they're playing cover 42. So cover four to Ola BC side, and then they're clouding Preston Williams. So they're going to double team Preston Williams with a corner and safety on the backside right now. Translate bang eight. Bang eight is just a seven step by the receiver seam route. So he's going to hit the seven step, and it's a skinny post right through the pylon. Like it. Another play action. Hills throw to the sideline, caught. And that's the old reliable Preston Williams who's having a fabulous day. That's eight catches now, another 14 yards there. And, and Coach Bobo has to be happy with Colin Hill right now. He is, he's throwing it all over the place. I mean, he's very accurate. The first quarter was a little iffy, need to get warmed up a little bit. But right now, everything's on target, in time, in rhythm, utilizing the length of his receivers on the outside. And he's playing a heck of a ball game right now. Matthew sidesteps one. Tough to run against Air Force on any Saturday, let alone a Thanksgiving Thursday. They give up just 122 yards per game. Kyle Johnson with the stop, the Jacksonville native. I like to see Air Force get maybe into a little bit more of a cover two. Get some safety support over the top because right now these corners are having a tough time covering Preston Williams and old BC Johnson on the outside. Motion man is Johnson. Hill on play action. Rolling, firing, and picked off at the one. Intercepted by Jeremy Fedulum. Rolling on the field is an interception by the defense. Air Force ball, first down. Timeout. And that's a great play by Fedrum. Third interception of the year. Does a great job. Doesn't bite on the play action. Finds his spot. Finds Preston Williams. And makes a great play to get his offense the ball back. You see right there. Jumping right in front. Great play right there. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Proudly serving the Armed Forces veterans and their families for over 85 years. Insured by NCUA. By Ram Trucks. Built to serve. And by Phillips 66. Proud to be here. That was last night in our college football family here at CBS Sports. To everyone out there, happy Thanksgiving and a, a job well done for all of us who are away from uh, family. Enjoying a football afternoon here on Thanksgiving and looking forward to celebrating Thanksgiving when we all get back home. I tell you what, Rich, to start the half, Air Force 13 plays, 74 yards. Get down to the inch yard line. I mean, right in there. And then Carl State, great stop. Six plays, 84 yards. No points, no points. Great two drives for both offenses and just stalled out with the interception and then going for it on fourth down. That's 160 yards of offense and, and no payoff. DJ Hammond in his end zone. Fires it and incomplete Andrew Smith. The intended receiver, Jamal Hicks, on the coverage. One more look at the interception. 
sometimes the quarterback, you're just feeling good. You just feel great. You think everything's going to be a completion. And honestly, I don't think he sold Jeremy Fedgelum back there. I think maybe a, a linebacker or a defense lineman may have gotten his view, but he just can't force the ball, especially inside the red zone. Throw it away, live to play another down. Your offense is moving it, like we said, 84 yards in six plays. And you cost your team an opportunity to put three or maybe seven points on the board. They're down six. Hammond, a bullet throw and caught there at the 16. Marcus Bennett. That was an absolute laser. Just a simple out route. And he brings the, the Hayaka, the heater, <laughs> right there with Marcus Bennett. Great reaction going up, using his eyes to make sure he secures the catch and get the first down. Bacon straight ahead. Slowing down this triple option is not easy. Amanda Balionis has more on that. You know, Rich, it's not easy, but it, it's a little bit easier when you have a secret weapon. And it, Coach Bobo's dad, George, as Coach will say, hey, his dad's a triple option guru after coaching it for the majority of his life at the high school level. So he brought him in to sit in on the meetings all week this week. He said he did that because he wanted him to be prepared, but he also didn't want to get that phone call from his dad afterwards with the I told you so's, and here's what you should have done. <laughs> hey, Amanda, that's great stuff. Mike Bobo told us uh, his dad was a, a wizard at the triple option until Mike got to high school and he couldn't run the option so dad changed the offense and they threw it around while uh, yeah, yeah, Mike was there. Yeah, Coach Bobo, I'm sorry, but he's not the most fleet of foot, more of a drop back passer. And here's the other thing, here's, you know, the, the, the tie to Air Force is this. His father, while he was the, a high school legend coaching the option, used to come to Colorado Springs to meet with Fisher DeBerry, of all people, mm -hmm. and talk about the option. DeBerry, of course, the longtime coach here. I mean, they've only had two head coaches in the last 35 years, and so that's a, a neat tie into that. But right now, they just can't stop this guy. Cole Fagan is just getting eight and 10 yards with every carry. And it's just that fullback dive. It's the offensive line, though, taking control of the three-man front. I mean, just a career day at the moment. You see it, first contact was about seven yards down the field. With his strength, he's going to be able to get you 10 if that's the case. He's closing in on 200 yards. Last week, he went for 116 at Wyoming. That was his career high. From the 41, pitch, Remsburg outside. Jamal Hicks has had a, an outstanding day coming up from his uh, strong safety spot. And the defense has done a pretty good job with those sweep plays. The jet sweeps with a little pitch action with it. They've been great. The safeties downhill missed a couple of tackles, but overall doing a pretty good job. It's, it's just the fullback dive. It's the fullback dive and then a couple play action passes over top. Thirteen tackles right now for Jamal Hicks. Seven of them solos. Second down eight. Hammond on the quarterback draw. Right to midfield. He's blasted by Josh Watson and Ellison Hubbard. Short of the first down. Third down and about one. And get ready for Cole Fagan right up the middle once again. Defense, defense is low enough. They're going to be downhill. I mean, look at all the guys right there in the box. I mean, they're low enough, but the offensive line, they got it figured out. They're taking care of that front seven, giving the fullback plenty of room. This is Bordeaux, and he's got the first down. And again, you go back to this offensive line. Parker Ferguson, Nolan Loffenberg, Connor Vickupitz, Griffin Landrum was injured. Scott Haddock, we've seen Christopher Mitchell in there as well. All one senior in that entire class, and that's Griffin Landrum. The rest of those guys you just mentioned, Rich, are all sophomores, juniors, and you look at the running backs, juniors, 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 sophomores. I mean, the majority of this offense, besides Marcus Bennett and Ronald Cleveland, will be back along with two very capable quarterbacks. Hammond's throw caught there by Bennett. The senior wide receiver to the 39-yard line. That's an eight-yard pickup. And that's the dimension of this offense that we're seeing more and more of the second half of the season. 
It's to be able just to drop back three steps, throw a quick hitch, quick play action, throw it over top. Something last year we didn't see, and maybe even earlier in the season with Worthman at quarterback, these, these quarterbacks are accurate, which makes it really, really tough on the secondary to be downhill in order to help with those fullback dives. Of course, Fagan is just a junior. Hammond's going to throw to Fagan, knocked down. Good defense there. Trey Thomas coming from his uh, linebacker spot. It's a great job staying home, reacting off the play action, off the fake pump. And this is big now. Can they get a quick stop and get this a fourth and maybe two or three if they could knock the fullback in the backfield? Once again, Cole Fagan is back in the game. And it's Fagan, and he's got the first down to the 36-yard line. Chains move, clock moves. And then we talked about the start this half, Rich. At what point is the will of this defense going to be broken? Because right now you've been on the field a long time, a long first drive to start this half. And once again, another long drive that's going to end this quarter. These guys are going to be worn out a little bit. And they already do look a little bit with their hands on their shoulders and hands on their hips. And that time of possession you talked about being pretty close at half, starting to tilt towards Air Force. Fagan busts through again. Just a few yards shy of 200 is Cole Fagan. And Air Force with another seven yard gain. On to the fourth on a Thanksgiving in the Mountain West. Air Force and Cole Fagan up by four. gives you a game summary and brings you up to speed on Air Force and Colorado State. Rivalry game in the Mountain West into the fourth. Aaron Murray, the time of possession, uh -oh, pops man. off the page. It is just, just wow. Almost double time of possession right now. We talk about last year's game when these two played. Air Force had about 41 minutes time of possession. The way things are looking like right now, they're going to be upper 30s and really dominating the line of scrimmage. Speaking of dominating, Cole Fagan is dominating right now. I'll tell you what, last two games, over 320 yards, averaging 7.6 yards a carry, Rich. I mean, coming into the night, he was right at, what, 741 total yards for the season. And no one would have said, oh, he's going to get 1,000 for the year. But right now, he's coming in pretty close. Might have a chance to eclipse a thousand by the end of this game if he continues to run the way he is. His dad was uh, known as a great run stopper. Was a defensive end, played for seven years for the 49ers, University of Miami products. That down to the 22 yard line. And while we were away, Colin Hill walking towards the locker room. He came out of the medical tent and is headed to the Colorado State locker room. And from the look on its face, he's not real pleased. And that's not a good sign. We talked about it. He was having a tremendous day before throwing that interception. K.J. Carter-Samuels has plenty of experience. Probably the next guy up. Wide open and just out of the reach of Andrew Smith. Oh, that could have been a dagger right there. Wide open. It's just just nice and easy. Put it right on his chest. You don't have to lead him. You look right there. I mean, there's no one within about 10 yards. Just throw it up almost like a punt maybe. Make him stop, catch it, then he can turn around and just walk into the end zone. There's been a few of those today. I know Donald Hammond has a strong arm, but sometimes he just needs to put a little bit more touch on it, make it a little bit easier to catch. Just third down at seven. Blitz comes. Hammond gets rid of it early, and this is incomplete. Colorado State blitzing 
Forces an overthrow, and now a fourth down and seven, and the field goal unit comes on yeah. for Air Force. Yeah, smart move. Get this to a seven-point game right here, especially the way Colorado State's moving the ball almost effortlessly on the offensive side of the football. But it will be interesting. Like we just talked about Cohen Hill in, this, in, the, in the locker room right now. Can K.J. Carr Samuels lead this team to victory in the fourth quarter? Jake Conkey missed just wide left from 55 at the end of the first half. He's 7 of 10. This is a 40-yarder. And he knocks this one in. Conkey's kick is good. Well, it started for Air Force with a pick. And then three points and a seven point lead. <laughs> 20 to 13 Air Force on top. A new league offers new opportunities. And we're talking football. Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, CBS Sports Network. Live in Las Vegas, the inaugural Alliance of American Football quarterback draft where franchises select who will lead their team under center. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the first select? No, I don't know if you're going to be the first selection. Hopefully. We'll see. But Aaron Murray, who we'll has spent, uh, what, three and a half years in the yes. NFL, is uh, going to dive back in in the Alliance. And maybe you'll be calling some of my games then in, the, in the spring. It should be a lot of fun, a lot of good players, and uh, a little 10-game season. So I'm excited. Got to get my butt in shape, though. I'll tell you, just looking at that, uh, that photo of you as a, a Kansas City Chief, that was impressive. I don't know if we can go back and look at that. Look at the I bicep. Mean, the bi curls for the girls, Rich. You know how it, I saw you. Rich, everyone was working out this morning, too. I mean, he was about 50 pounds in each arm. See, that's why I'm trying I, to get like that over there. I walked into the hotel gym at 8 in the morning, and Aaron Murray was already halfway through his workout. Just grinding. He knew that it, he knew that he'd be training at altitude. Now we turn our attention to Colorado State. We're awaiting some word on Colin Hill, who walked into the locker room. K.J. Carter Samuels, the senior, the transfer from Washington, who's had not a bad year, 61% completion percentage, 18 touchdowns and eight picks. Down a touchdown in his last college game and an opportunity here in the fourth quarter. Let's check in with Amanda Balionis. Amanda? Rich just got word that Hill is out for the remainder of the game with a concussion. Uh, well, that's not great news for Mike Bobo. The good news is he's got K.J. Carter Samuels, who's at times thrown the ball well and moved the team this year. Oh, you go back to the first game of the season versus Hawaii, he threw for over 500 yards. So he is capable of leading this offense to victory today and throwing it all over the field. We've seen him a couple times this year, and we've watched the film. The issue with K.J. Carter Samuels is it starts with his feet. He needs to get a little bit faster, move those, get, get in position to throw to those receivers, and then you'll see it. He has a little bit of a long delivery, and that's why he takes a little bit too many sacks. He's late on some throws, and that's why he also has eight interceptions on the season. And keep, but, in, and, and keep in mind as well, Colorado State missed an extra point, so they're down seven instead of being down six right now. Third and one, they're going to keep it on the ground. And I don't know. Had to get to the 35. Jordan Jackson made the hit. Izzy Matthews with the carry. I think he's got it. And he does. He just needs to get to the 35. Just needs to get to the line. Yeah. Woo. Woo. I mean, uh, right, that second effort right there looks like he got to the line for the first down. Marcus McElroy in the game, shotgun, Carter Samuels loads up, fires it, and it's caught by Trey McBride. Young tight end, just a freshman out of Fort Morgan, Colorado. They are really high on this young guy. Yeah, well, if you're in the Coach Bobo system, they love to utilize the tight ends in the eye formation or even out of a 21, 22 personnel. Carter Samuels, back shoulder throw. Williams stopping on a dime and making the catch. It's a great job. Understand, Zane Lewis has done a great job of not letting Williams get over top. We've seen a couple times, but he's been in the hip pocket, which allows a quarterback to throw those back shoulder fades. And another change here, Colorado State has been huddling up the entire game by design. Right now, they're going fast, no huddle.
Carter Samuel will run it inside the 40 and down to the 30 seven yard line. Nice gain and a first down. Actually, they're going to mark him short of the stick. It's second down and one. And they want to go up tempo just the way Air Force's defense is going today. First down line brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Flag comes from way in the backfield. Well, Sessa Fafita made the hit. McElroy, and the sophomore from Denver, was the ball carrier. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 90. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That is the first penalty against Air Force today. Here's the ISO right here. You see right there, pretty much choking him out. Right there in the throat, up in the face. Micah Capra. And it's a good call by the refs right there to see that one. And Rich, I think they want to go fast just the way their defense has been playing in these long drives that Air Force has had offensively. They know they got to score fast if they want the ball to get the ball again a couple more times this, this quarter. Oh, hit and dropped and absolutely buried. DeMonte Meeks from his middle linebacking spot. It's a great job by DeMonte Meeks. Made his first start last week, actually, versus Wyoming. Had a fumble recovery. Great sack right there. Just a little bit of delayed blitz. A little bit of a green dog. He was responsible for the running back. The running back blocks, so he decides then to blitz around the guard. Gets in there for the sack. All right. Define green dog. So green dog, if you're in, if you're in man coverage as a linebacker and your running back blocks, you're then given permission to blitz. That's the green. He goes light. out and it's the green light. Green dog because a dog is a blitz. Play clock down. Colorado State's going to get a timeout. Prior to the delay, timeout. Colorado State. Their first of the half. Media timeout. Colorado State on the move and down in the fourth quarter. Rippin going deep, looking for Richardson. Got it! Touchdown! Fresno State into the end zone, 86 yards. Sights and sounds from a 2018 Mountain West season. Aaron Murray is uh, Mountain West honors. Hey, you got to tell you what, Utah State, I know they had the scare last week versus Colorado State, but they have been dominant on a roll this season. And then Nevada, a great team. We're actually going to be covering this week and have a chance to go 8-4 this season. Jeff Tedford, very, very talented coach. Fresno is having a great year. And a lot of love for Jordan Love, Utah State quarterback. It's going to be a heck of a game Saturday night for the uh, Mountain Division title at Boise State, Utah State and Boise State. Here, second down and long. K.J. Carter Samuels in, fires for the corner, caught! Williams, touchdown! His third, 31 yards. Have a day. Once again, just a little bit of a corner route. Offensive line, slide protection, plenty of time. And then a beautiful throw and catch. Like I said, second time win has been matched up one-on-one -on, -one on that corner route. Takes advantage again for his third touchdown of the day. 11 catches, 229 yards. And three touchdowns. And this extra point is blocked. Jordan Jackson gets an arm on it. That's two missed extra points, and Colorado State is still down. Rich, this, this field goal barely got about five, six yards off the ground. You see right here, great block, but as a kicker, get the ball up. It's an extra point, for goodness sakes. But great job. K.J. Carter-Samuels coming in there, getting his opportunity. And find Preston Williams 
on the corner route, third touchdown of the day. Unfortunately, couldn't get the extra point, but what a game we got going on. Hi, I'm Mike Bobo, head football coach of Colorado State University. This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for my friends and my family and to live in such a great country like the United States of America. Happy Thanksgiving. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there from our CBS Sports College football family. This has been a really entertaining game. Colorado State and Air Force, and yeah, it's a rivalry. And Air Force, amazingly, is still on top after two missed extra points from Colorado State. The Rams have not won here since 2002 when Bradley Van Pelt was lighting it up for the Rams. I tell you what, who is not disappointed this afternoon? Preston Williams. We knew he was going to have to play big, and he has. He has been dominant, moving all over the place, one on one the outside. You see him in the slot getting matched up with safeties and linebackers on corner routes, just like this one right there. He is everything that was advertised. He's been tremendous this entire season. He's put a cherry on top with his performance right now. Michael Gallup, Rashard Higgins, both Colorado State products in the National Football League. Very good wide receivers. And Williams is certainly the next guy up. Hayden Remsburg and Colorado State's defense. Remember the goal line stand they had early in this second half. Fourth and one from the one. And they stopped DJ Hammond on a sneak. And the defense right now playing with a, a lot of emotion. Josh Watson's got 15 tackles. Jamal Hicks has got a dozen. Trey Thomas has got a dozen. And that's another good stop there. Thomas hits Fagan, and this sets up a long third down. This is exactly what you want if you're Colorado State. Yeah, they're selling out right now. They're going to say, if you're going to beat us, you better beat us throwing the football. All right now, third and six. Air Force has the ability to throw it with Hammond back there at the quarterback, but this is not the kind of position you want to be in. Hammond with pressure, fires, and it's caught there. Andrew Smith, flag down, back by the quarterback who is still down. Looks like it's going to be rough in the passer once again. Going to be an extremely late hit on number 33, Emmanuel Jones. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 33, low hit on the quarterback. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. First off, what a tremendous pass. You see right here, nice and calm in the pocket. Correct. 15 yards be added to the end of the oh. run. Mm. First down. That is low and that is late. And first off, going back to the throw, it's a dart of a pass. Great throw. And Late, like you said, Rich, late and low. Two no-nos right there. And that is tacked on yep. to the catch. So the ball goes all the way into Colorado State territory at the 43. Ed, you're feeling good defensively. Gets a third and six situation. Great job stopping the fullback die finally. And then big pass play. And then, like you said, tack on 15 more. First and 10, Fagan busts over the left side, still churning to the 38-yard line. That's another six yards on a record-setting day for the Air Force fullback. It's going to be interesting to see the tempo that Air Force goes for the rest of this quarter. They're going to slow it down a little bit. Today's first down line brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. We are at the Air Force Academy, the first ever Thanksgiving game here in Colorado Springs. Troy Calhoun and Air Force who have had so many close losses this year. All of their losses have been close losses and they are four and seven and Fagan is rolling still inside the 25 down to the 22 yard line. 16 more yards. Look at the line of scrimmage. Look at the offensive line. These guys up front, the three big guys, tremendous job. I mean, that is a gaping hole. The cross block, the guards pulling, and then blocking down. Once again, Fagan does not get touched until he gets to the secondary. 29 yards, look at that. 
230. 29 carries, 230 yards. Fagan with a touchdown. A dominant performance, but just a one-point lead for Air Force. Bordeaux is in right now, and he goes straight ahead. And that's a gain of six. We told you Cole Fagan was gonna be the one you need to watch out for. And he is not disappointed as well on the Air Force offense. The touchdown run, the big 56 yard run early in this game. He has been absolutely magical. A hard nosed runner. The offensive line has been doing tremendous, giving him plenty of room. But he's a beast. He is 230 yards rushing, a new fullback record here for Air Force. And they've been running this triple option for a long, long time. They've had a lot of really good fullbacks. It's been a special two weeks for that young man. He breaks Andy Smith's record, which uh, was accomplished in 1988. Smith had 213 yards. Colorado State needs a stop here and at least holds Air Force to three points. It's going to be very interesting if Air Force can get this to a fourth and short situation. I know your defense has not been playing great, but if you kick it a field goal, you force Colorado State to have to go down there and score a touchdown in order to take the lead. Best bet is just get the first down and you don't have to worry about it. Little throwback caught there by Remsburg and he's hit and dropped right on the stick. Jamal Hicks made the stop and that's a first down. They mark it inside the seven. A little wrinkle right here. Fake like you're gonna do a quick rollout. Quarterback sets up. And then Caden Rensburg did a great job catching the ball again north and south and then fighting for that extra yards right there, that extra effort gets it done. And the most important thing, I want you to keep watching this clock right here, 514, 513, keeps sticking down and this offense is gonna start slowing down a little bit too. Remember the last goal line stand, Fagan knifes through to the six. And they still have an opportunity to get a first down. So they can get a first down and that adds another few more plays and then more time off the clock for this offense as well. And Colorado State, if they if they do give up a touchdown and an extra point, are still within one score. Obviously it would take a two point conversion. <laughs> DJ Hammond has been there from the very start at quarterback for Air Force. Fagan, good hit. And not much going there. Manuel Jones on the hit. And this is third down and goal, or excuse me, third down and two from the four. And if I'm Air Force, I just want to get the first down. That's all you want to do, get the first down. Like we keep saying, the clock is your best friend right now. And keep it rolling a little bit. Good job right there. Evaluate what's going on. Continue to get the shot clock down. Snap it with about five, maybe four seconds to go. Fagan needed a little bit more information there. Quick pitch, Rimsburg's got the corner, got the touchdown. I think right here, they're gonna go for a field goal here. No need to go for two, but great job. You see Colorado State, everyone loaded in for the fullback dive and no one on the outside. And Remsburg walks in. They're gonna kick the field goal. I like this decision right here. Force Colorado State to score and then go for two. So this extra point will give them an eight point lead. Extra point good. Flag down. And you're gonna be offsides on Colorado State. Got a little start on the outside. Offside, defense, number 38. That penalty's declined. Try is good. Timeout. 
Impressive drive by Air Force. The lead is eight. Yeah, great job. Run the football, eating up the clock. And then Kane Rensburg finishes it off to make this a 27-19 ball game. Happy Thanksgiving again to everybody out there. Air Force on top. Aaron Murray's keys to the game revisited. I, I think Colorado State offensively has done a great job, but their defense has not gone off the field. Air Force, 36 minutes of possession. Then Air Force giving up too many big plays. Preston Williams having a field day right now, this secondary. Now, while we were gone, Colin Hill, starting quarterback in street clothes, a concussion, has left the game. K.J. Carter-Samuels, plenty of experience, and he led the last touchdown drive for Mike Bobo and Colorado State. And there's plenty of time left. It's an eight-point Air Force lead. And a strong kick going to go through the end zone. So Colorado State down eight, 335 left. They've got all their timeouts, and we step aside. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Exchange. Welcoming home all honorably discharged veterans to their online shopping benefit by over 6,000 independent craft breweries, turning the beer world upside down one glass at a time, and by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Always special for Senior Day at the Academies, and one of the most coveted assignments if you are a cadet is that of Pilot training, and as Colorado State takes the football here at the 25, the academy also in the last couple of weeks also giving out assignments for those seniors. KJ Carter Samuels fires to the sideline, caught there. That's Ola BC Johnson, and Johnson is wrestled out at the 34 yard line. And this year, the football program has the most pilots ever advancing the pilot training program. And these are some of those seniors that get that coveted spot. Now Colorado State on the ground with Izzy Matthews. Got a first down. He's got more than that. 45 and he's out to midfield. And Aaron Murray, there's plenty of time for the Rams who are down eight here. Yeah, plenty of time. You don't need to rush. I like it. I like it. They're playing a little bit more up tempo. I think Samuel Card feels good going a little bit faster pace right now. See the but timeouts. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. You said timeouts. 3-10 to go in this ball game. You can continue to run your offense. And also, you don't want to give Air Force the ball back as well. Mike Bobo. Remember, the Rams thought they had a win in the last second last week against Utah State on a Hail Mary that was complete. Carter Samuel firing to the sideline and incompletes. Now, where do you go here? I mean, the targets have weighed heavily to Preston Williams. Williams, as you see him, 11 catches, 229 yards. But Ola B.C. Johnson in the second half has been open a lot. He has, and so Warren Jackson, too, number nine, in the slot. I think he might look, start to focus on those guys a little bit because there's going to be so much attention uh, on Preston Williams on the outside. Double coverage, safety, cornerback on top. Second down, 10. Colin Hill out with a concussion. K.J. Carter Samuels, a touchdown drive all ready for him. Blitz comes, he's in trouble, and he unloads it. And this is going to be third down and 10. Lakota Wills on the pressure. And this Air Force defense knows Colin Hill a little bit quicker getting the ball out. K.J. Carr Samuels holds onto the ball a little bit longer. We talked about his longer delivery, kind of drops the football, gets some pressure on him. And you would think with just 243 left, this is four down. I would think so, especially if you get a, a decent chunk right here on third down. So you don't got to get all 10, get five, get seven, gets a fourth and manageable. Air Force loves the blitz. See how many they bring. Here comes the blitz. Carter Samuels fires. Caught there. That's Cameron Butler at the 41, and that's a first down. 
Big, big play. And that's the issue. If you want to bring the house and you don't get to the quarterback, a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Colorado State took advantage with their talented tight end one-on-one -on -one in order to get the first down. Another blitz, little quick dump there. That's Williams in traffic. Williams with the 25, fighting for the sideline. Gets to the 22. 19 more yards, and here come the Rams. Great call. Air Force has been bringing some pressure. So what do you do? You dial up a screen, a little tunnel screen to your best receiver, Preston Williams. Catches it, gets your center and both guards out blocking. And you're knocking on the door right now. Give yourself a chance to tie this ball game. Low snap. Carter Samuels fires a wobbler and it's intercepted. Kyle Floyd in Air Force. Rolling on the field is an interception by the defense. Has Air Force ball, first down. Turned over Colorado State. Great pressure up front. Kind of forces a wobbler of a pass. And then Kyle Floyd in the right position at the right moment. Air Force by eight, 154 left. Enormous play by the Air Force defense. Kyle Floyd with the interception. It's been a day of miscues. It has been tough. They've had opportunities early on, miss extra point. And then you turn around a block, extra point, super low kick, easy block for this Air Force. And then the interception is a costly one, having a great drive, throws it right into coverage. And then once again, a little pressure on the quarterback, causes an inaccurate pass down the field, and an Air Force defense taking advantage. Two timeouts left for Colorado State. Cole Fagan certainly going to touch the ball here. And this is Fagan, got it locked away and busted out and that may be a first down that's 10 yards on that carry fagan is closing in on 250 yards now 32 carries and right now they're going to save Colorado State's going to save those two timeouts they just got to get one stop as soon as they get a stop they'll start using them but pretty much right now if air force is able to get one more first down looks like they'll be able to secure the victory Fagan again, and there's the timeout. Minute 14 left. Let's go down to the Air Force sideline. Amanda Balionis. Amanda? Rich, it's been fun to watch after that last interception. This sideline was absolutely electric. These guys are screaming, jumping on each other, shouting things into the crowd. You have to think, after a team that has suffered so many close losses, they are really appreciating this. They're also taking uh, team pictures on the sideline as well. They are truly soaking in this senior night. Amanda, you're right. I mean, you look at their, their schedule and the close losses, the five-point loss to Nevada. They had San Diego State at San Diego State down and lost that game by four. The Boise State game was neck and neck. The three-point loss at Army. Last week, they should have won that game. They gave up 21 points in the fourth quarter at Wyoming. I mean, that all of a sudden, you just get a couple of those to fall your way, and you're looking at eight wins. Yeah, they're up there. I mean, they've had their opportunities, and, and we talked about earlier, there's a slight, very slight chance to make a bowl game. They need a few other teams to lose this weekend. That is right on the sticks, and that could end it. And who else? But Cole Fagan, it is a first down. And the math does not favor Colorado State now. Fagan climbing towards 260 yards on the day. Yeah, it's been a tough year for Coach Bobo in this Colorado State. We talked about it to start the show. Doesn't help. Your starting quarterback, Colin Hill, goes out in the spring. And then Coach Bo with his health issues this summer. It's been a tough, tough year for the Rams. <laughs> Hand
Hammond takes a knee, pushing and shoving and flags. And this probably stems from the play at the end of the first half when Air Force fakes taking a knee. And we talked about this, Rich. I said, hey, if this happens at the end of the game and Air Force is taking a knee, I don't think Colorado State appreciate what happened at the end of that first half. And I kind of expected them to be a little feisty if this situation did come up. After the play, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 52. That player has been disqualified. 15 yards, automatic first down, timeout. This was the play in the first half. Yeah, it all stems from this. Kind of, you, you tell the defense that, hey, we're gonna take a knee, back off, don't hurt anyone. And uh, you kind of anticipated this occurring. If Air Force was gonna win this game and take a knee, that something may brew, like we said, stemming from that first half. Well, a moment to thank everybody that went from their families and their homes and spent their Thanksgiving here in Colorado Springs. Our, our terrific production crew, Carlo Gennarini, our producer, Matt Plendo, our director, Kevin Manuel, our operations producer, best snack table in college football, our AD, Michael Nastry, Mike Milstein, our BA, Jeremy Ward pushing the buttons, Steve Howard, Andrew Wotring, Nate Wetterower, our phone operator, Brian Ives, Michael Soraki, Vince and Daryl, Mike and Don, Scott Jones, our, our spotter all season. Amanda and, and Aaron and I are the beneficiaries of a great crew, and we had a terrific football game here on Thanksgiving. Air Force finishes off Colorado State. The Falcons go to five and seven to end their season. And for Mike Bobo and the Rams, a season to forget. And they drop to three and nine and two and six in the Mountain West. Two guys with a lot of respect for each other. That young man's got more football to play. DJ Hammond is just a sophomore. And as you've noted a couple times during the telecast, Air Force has got a lot coming back. And a couple really good quarterbacks. It's going to be interesting in the spring. Donald Hammond versus Isaiah Sanders. Two guys capable of leading this team at the quarterback position. They'll be battling out. And I think that guy right there may be gone. Just showed us that he is the next NFL wide receiver from Colorado State. He'll join Michael Gallup and Rashard Higgins in the league. Preston Williams with uh, an incredible afternoon. They, look, we talked about the, the two guys to watch at the start of the telecasts. One was Preston Williams and the other was Cole Fagan, and they certainly did not disappoint. The uh, Air Force team now headed over. The cadets are not all here today because of the holiday, but still they gather for the alma mater. In a season of close losses, Air Force hangs on in a rivalry game. They beat 
Colorado State. They need a lot of help if they're going to sneak in at five and seven. There's a lot of five win teams that are playing 21 of them actually uh, this weekend. There's only six bowl spots left. But I, I think, you know, look, it's, it's not a good feeling though, to not be in control. We keep talking about they've had their opportunity. And then the best example is last week versus Wyoming, 21 points given up in those last four minutes to lose that game. And as you pointed out today, they're a team with a lot of talent coming back. And I think that team will come back with unfinished business on their minds because this should have been uh, not a five and seven season. This should have been a seven and five or a, an eight and four season. 100%. They, they put a good product on the field this entire season. Nothing they can do now. They got to sit back, relax, watch some football this weekend, and hope the f hope uh, the, the chips fall in their in their favor. So we'll see what happens. And for Colorado State, first and foremost, you hope for good health from their coach, Mike Mike Bobo battled that uh, peripheral neuropathy throughout the season, and he gutted the whole year out to his credit. And let's hope that the off season brings uh, better health for Coach Bobo, and and certainly. A better year next year for the Rams. And I think they have talent. And it starts with that man right there, Colin Hill. Can he stay healthy for next season? All right, Amanda Balionis is down with Cole Fagan. Amanda? Yeah, Cole Fagan now in the record books. 260 rushing yards, the most ever at Air Force by a fullback. Uh, describe this performance today, how you guys were able to get this done. Uh, we had, uh, I just got to credit my offensive line, getting a lot of push up front and uh, opening up some big holes for me. And uh, that's it, really. Yeah. It's senior day. As a junior, what does it mean to you to be able to send these guys off with a win at Falcon Stadium one last time? Uh, it's great. Uh, you know how hard they work, how much they love this place and this game. Um, so after a rough season, I mean, it's, it's really, it feels really good to send them off for the win. Well, and about this rough season, so many losses that were so close that could have been wins. Tonight, you guys come on the other side of that. What does that speak to the perseverance of this team? What has the mentality been of this team to fight through? Uh, our mentality has become like finish, you know. There's a lot of games that we didn't finish. Um, so like this week, we really push that, uh, just finish, finish a game, you know? All right, you guys certainly did that. Congratulations. Rich? Amanda, terrific work today. A win for Air Force. Aaron Murray, I'll see you in Las Vegas on Saturday night. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. For Aaron Murray, Amanda Balionis, our entire CBS Sports crew. I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's send it to Brent Stover, Brian Jones, Houston Nutt for Inside College Football, presented by Go RV. Rich, Aaron, Amanda, very well done. We're with you for the next 35 minutes on Inside College Football, getting you set for a fantastic rivalry weekend, including the other college football game to come later tonight in the Egg Bowl. But tying a bow on this, Coach, Air Force wins by eight, holds on at the end. Five and seven season is how it finishes up. Certainly not what they're looking for, but a great way to end. Great way to end. The seniors go out the right way. Always helps everything. Recruiting, uh, off season, everything's better now. And of course, they wish they had two or three games back. But the way they controlled the football, kept the ball for over 38 and a half minutes. And you got Cole Fagan. 34 times he took the ball for 260 yeah. yards. Yeah, Fagan and that Air Force offense. They they were full of possessions and, and rushing yards, as full as I am of turkey, coach. <laughs> and I got some some left. I'm going to get to directly. As soon as we get through talking about this running game, Cole Fagan was just outstanding. He, he, he sat there and he applauded his offensive line, which he should have. But, I mean, this guy ran through some gaping holes. Some of those holes, you could run an 18 wheeler through them. But anytime you take on this triple option, you try to do too much, that could be your death knell. So you have to play assignment football just handle your business as Alabama will tell you taking on the Citadel last right. week being tied with them uh, they're 10 10 at the half so that's the key the fundamentals the technique and Colorado State had none of that but on the flip side they had a playmaker themselves in Preston ooh, Williams ooh. Williams is awesome I mean he put on another career performance uh, in this game 12 catches 248 a career high and three touchdowns coach I, I love watching him play uh, BJ we, we talked about this guy for a long time 
and you go back to the start of the season, he played the entire year. Here's a beautiful post corner round. Mm -hmm. At the top of his route, if you watch him, he finishes. And for a big six foot four guy, does a great job controlling his body. Here he is. He just gets deep. Perfect throw right here again. Again, using his body, kind of shields defenders off. And then you take the underneath. He had an underneath uh, under play. Here's another good catch. Great concentration. Great throw, yeah. But he took an under route. And to me, he can make all the catches, BJ, whether it be over the middle, down the sideline, or even the under the screen. And, and then the, the yards after the catch. That's impressive as well able to separate from the would-be defenders now if we could only get his barber to finish that hairstyle oh. I don't know what you call that what is that cornucopia I don't, I don't know that. what is he, that he needs your guy you got a good guy I got a pretty good one playboy is his name 14 yeah. 14 <laughs> receiving touchdowns for Preston Williams this season second most in the FBS Cole Fagan we mentioned a career high 260 on the ground most by a fullback in Air Force history most by anybody Air Force in five years and for Fagan it's two straight 100 yard games, five rushing touchdowns his last six games. So some tremendous on both sides, individual performances, Air Force wins, more inside college football next.